From the Forest National Arena in Brussels, Belgium, welcome to the It's Showtime Fast and Furious Middleweight Eight-Man Tournament here on HDNet. Tonight, eight men enter, only one will prevail as the best of the best in the 70 kilo It's Showtime division. Andy Sauer, Arty Koshenko, Chris Gibby, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the National Forest in Brussels, Belgium. It's Showtime Event, edition number 52. It's Showtime Events, in cooperation with Music Hall and BFN Group, proudly presents the world-class fighters of tonight. First, the participants of the Fast and Furious 70 kilogram max eight-man tournament. Artur Kisenko, presenting the Ukraine. Gago Drago, presenting Armenia. Andy Sauer, presenting the Netherlands. Harut Grigorian, presenting Armenia. Murat Direksi, Presenting Turkey, Chris Nijimbi. Presenting the Republic of Congo, Robin van Roosmalen. Presenting the Netherlands, Shahid Ulat El Hajj. Presenting Morocco. The fighters of the super fights of tonight are Morocco, Yasin Baitar, Armenia, Marat Grigorian. Spain, Moises Bouten. Albania, Rustemi Kresnik. And at last, fighting for the Showtime World Title 77 kilogram max. Representing Suriname, Myrtle the Predator Groenhardt. His opponent represents Russia. And is the current It's Showtime World Champion, Artem Lion Levin. It's time! It's time! It's showtime! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome live here at the Forest National in Brussels in Belgium. BFM Group, together with the Music Hall, presents It's Showtime edition number 52. Tonight, we will have spectacular fights for you, including an It's Showtime world title fight, 77 kilograms max. And also, this is a very special night, because we will have an eight-man tournament, the Fast and the Furious, 70 kilograms max, and the winner of this tournament will take home a prize of 50,000 euros. So that will be a very, very spectacular night for you. And now, everybody at home and here in Brussels, are you ready? I think it's time. It's time. It's showtime! We're gonna start with the first fight. The quarterfinals of the Fast and Furious Tournament, 70 kilograms max. And this first fighter making his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, representing the Ukraine. Please welcome Artur Kishenko! What a fantastic atmosphere at the Forest National, otherwise known as the Vorst National in Dutch here in Brussels, yeah. Belgium. As Artur Kishenko about to make his way out to the ring, Born in Odessa yeah. in the Ukraine. No, like Training these days at a Mike's gym in Amsterdam yeah. alongside Melvin Manoff and okay. Vada Hari. Tremendous okay. story, Artur Koshenko yeah. began boxing as an 11-year-old and began Muay Thai when he was 12 under the auspices of the Captain Odessa gym with coach Patrinu. Won gold at the IFMA European Muay Thai Championships in 2004. Back-to-back -back gold medals in 06 and 07 at the World Championships in Bangkok. In 2008, who will ever forget, he placed runner-up to Masato in the K1 Max Finals, losing an extra round in an unforgettable match in which he knocked down Masato in the early get-go. 
Great to see Koshenko here tonight. And his opponent in the quarterfinals of the Fast and Furious, 70 kilograms max. Fighting out of the red corner, representing Armenia. Please welcome Gago! Drago, Drago. Always a sight to behold. Will he give us his traditional Drago dance on the way to center ring here? Another fantastic story. Born in Verishen, Armenia, now lives and fights out of Alkmaar in the Netherlands. A refugee of the Armenian war when he moved from Armenia to the Netherlands with his family when he was just four years old. There he is. Drago comes in here tonight. Not on the best of form, which has him overall in the odd standings. The fifth favorite to win the tournament. BetOnFighting.com supplying us with some odds for this one. Nikolikas, thank you. A plus 900 to win the tournament overall is Gago Drago. Always an entertainer. Always takes his time coming to the ring, does Drago. And here it comes. The Drago dance. And the audience here at the Forest National are joining in, and rightly so. There he goes. Every time I see this dance, Frank, I think somewhere in the world a village is deprived of an idiot. <laughs> it is the strangest dance I think we've seen them as a walk in, and really hasn't done him very well lately. He's, he's on a uh, good for run, but he's on a four fight losing streak right now. Indeed, four fight losing streak. Though in true Drago fashion, every fight was very hard fought. All four losses came by decision, including a loss and two fights ago to Arta Koshenko. And this fight is sponsored by our It's Showtime application for your smartphone. So all is in readiness for quarterfinal number one. Arta Koshenko comes in as the second favorite overall in the tournament stakes at plus 250 to win. In this fight in particular, he is minus 240. Gago Drago at plus 190. 50,000 euros on the line for the winner of the Fast and Furious 70 kilo tournament, which is stacked with one obvious Very exception, no that levels. being no Giorgio levels. Petrosian, no who so many of us were hoping would be no in this levels. tournament, but had to no withdraw holding. due to no injury holding. pretty Stop recently. Break break. Stop, Stop, and look at the stare down here from Koshenko. My Stop. word, what size he has put on since joining Mike's gym a little less than a year ago. A very scary Round individual, Art Koshenko. Michael Shabello, Frank Trigg with you. The towering size advantage goes the way of the Ukrainian Koshenko in the black. It is Gago Drago in the black and yellow. And look out for the leg kicks and the beautiful patented liver shot, dipping off the left hand from Arta Koshenko. Arta's getting right after it right away, stepping inside immediately, forcing Drago to get on the defense, and that's why he beat him the first time. There's the body shot, going to the liver early. Of course, these two fought in March earlier this year, where Kishenko decisioned Gago over five rounds in Amsterdam. Kishenko used to be quite the KO artist when he was young. He's actually won a fight by knockout since December 2009 against Vladimir Morovchik, who he knocked out with a high right round kick. Can he get back to his knockout ways here tonight, Kishenko? Double right hand. Nice knees. Good evasion. Drago counting to the left hook and gets the lead leg swept out. Drago got smart. He had to change his game up. He was standing real defensively in the very beginning. He knows he has to get off the ropes, especially with the size of Koshenko. He's just so strong. Right. You can see already the work that Koshenko's been putting in at Mike's gym, sparring the likes of Melvin Mendes. There's a beautiful high knee from Koshenko. So working all the permissible techniques early on here. The elbows are not included in this rule set. Kicks, punches, knees certainly are. Limited grappling, high left round kick, but caught on the double forearms. And already, Drago looking fatigued at the sheer work rate 
How about to Kishenko here, Frank? He's hitting with nothing but power shots. And those two jabs just saw right there, the first soft shots he's thrown. Everything else has been a complete power shot. And I think he's hit him three times in the liver clean so far in this fight. Look at that. Jab two. Down the center corridor. Nice high check from Kishenko. And Drago has nothing Fight. at the moment that can phase the Ukrainian. Right hand is a lead. Again, right hand is a lead. Doubles up with that lead leg. This is just a succulent first round here from Kishenko. He has not put a foot, a hand, or a knee wrong. You can already see the reddening on the right cheek of Drago. Right hand lead is working a treat for Kashenko. The uppercut misses the target, not so the knee. And he is just schooling Drago. Oh, Drago finally got a punch in. Drago's biggest problem is that he's very defensive once he's inside that range. And that's when he needs to be thrown. I know he's going to get caught, counter punch or counter kick, but he's got to get inside. There's no way he's going to be able to beat Kashenko. He just stands here guarded up. Look at Kashenko measuring full extension on the right cross. He loves that inside leg kick that he drops to just below the knee. Very effective. You know, Kashenko has been undefeated since making the move to Mike's gym in late 2010. Comes in here, turn on a three fight win streak with wins over Nikki Holtzkin, Gago Drago, as we said in March, and Marcus Olberg, all by decision. So certainly the work with Mike Passanier has paid off for Kashenko. Doing a great job here. He's changing up his angles, not only changing up what he's hitting him with, but he's hanging up where he's hitting him upon the body. So it's, it's really confusing Drago. He's getting hit in the leg, then all of a sudden he's getting kicked in the face, then all of a sudden he's getting punched in the liver. I mean, his body's getting torn apart because he's not sure where anything's coming from. Mike Passanier there in the corner of Kishenko, who is choosing to stand between rounds. No damage for the Ukrainian yet. Also, his manager, Donatas Simonitis, in the corner. Colts is out of the ring, please. Well, the team with Gago Drago do have some issues oh. to address. How to prevent those body shots to start checking those inside leg kicks. There's Melvin Manor oh, from nice. the corner of Kishenko. Seconds. Oh, he's gotten smaller. One, two, three. Don't Round let him two. hear that, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he lost a lot of weight. Second round. And again, there you see the inside leg kick. And once more from Kishenko. Drago's got to start checking those and countering. See, I love how Kishenko uses that inside leg kick. He's not even using it as, as a power shot to tear apart the leg. He's just trying to offset his balance. He just wants Drago to be offset so he can't do anything. And he comes back immediately and hits him again. It's great. I think Kishenko's actually gotten faster since he moved to Mike's gym. I don't know if it's, he's gotten more confident with his striking ability, but he's definitely a lot quicker with his placement as well. And he is just a huge unit. 70 kilograms. Beautiful body shot again. Digging away to the midsection like he's digging for oil. Look at that double rip to the liver. Then a hook to the head. Short uppercut, straight right hand. More combinations than a Sudoku puzzle here in the second round for Arta Kishenko. At this point, Jarrell's just got to start throwing because he's not, he, he's just standing there as a punching bag. This is no good for him. He's throwing once every four or five times he's getting hit. He tries something. And like that, half the time he misses. He's got to get going quicker. Right. There's no way that Kishenko's going to allow him just to stand there and not make him fall down by getting hit by hitting him. I mean, this is a bad position right now for Drago. Not only is Kishenko so impressive in his offense, but defensively he is spot on here tonight again. Just digs the left hand below the elbow to the liver section, then comes upstairs. Working all levels here, Kishenko. And impressively, look how he weaves back out of the way of the left hand, gets on the inside of the right hand, throws a counter knee up to the forehead. I mean, this is a guy who could fight it. Super middleweight, light heavyweight, perhaps even go cruiserweight. I'm still amazed how he makes the 70 kilo cutoff. Well, the rumor is at Mike's gym is that he's always working. So he's one of those guys that just he's always got he's always in the gym. He's always making not hard, but always get his technique down. So as a result, he's burning a lot of calories every day. Because when I first saw him, Mike, I thought he was way too big to be in this weight class. Left talk again from Kishinka. He may use the right hand well, especially as a lead right, but the left has always been the money shot for Arta. Look at that double jab right. Thought about the liver, mm. faked it, came up to the head. Drago calling him forward. It's okay to be full of bravado 
But as Frank said earlier, Drago not answering back with anything. Stop. Stop. 20 seconds on the clock here in the second round. Been another convincing round for the Ukrainian. He's got these left hooks. Tight defense and right in the middle of his punching as well. It really, wow, good head weave. He's got a great position. He understands where everything is. He's really giving Drago fits. I don't know if it's just stylistically, or his confidence is up because he beat Drago just a little bit ago back in March, but he's really, really got this pattern now. You can see why Kishenko is plus 250, the second favorite to win this tournament overall here tonight. Will he indeed advance to meet maybe his old arch nemesis, Andy Sauer? He's ranked the number one favorite at plus 150. Two rounds down and one remaining. It is all for Gago Drago to do, lest he be eliminated here in the quarterfinal stage. Now, there is some of the fighting somebody so quickly again, you know, that, that does help out quite a bit. You know the, how the fights they go, you understand the confidence level, especially being the first time. And, and you're really going to get your training to go a lot better, but he's done, you know, Kinshenko's gotten so much better every single time that he's he's fought. And now when he's fighting Drago, he looks like he's fought, he's, he's a 20% better since the last time. And it, it's so much better, he's so much quicker. I mean, I'm, I'm really in amazement at how fast he's gotten wow. his hand speed. Third round. Kishenko just slings the legs. There's the right, and it sends Drago back a couple of paces. Look how he probes the jab, circling counterclockwise. Nice, off to his right. Gets that liver shot again, pulls the head down, a high left round. Drago just taking a beating here. Kishenko opening up at him again like a house of fire, pounding him into the corner. Drago goes down. That was just a good old-fashioned bludgeoning. Wow, he got in there. Drago said he, that was a good head kick, really enjoyed it, and then Drago just went in and went after it, kept coming. And really, from the earlier round, the first round, hitting with those body shots, it's really loosened him up now. Here comes the onslaught again from Kishenko, looking to finish here in the third round. Two shots to the liver and a high knee. If you know the effect of a good liver shot, you know the body closes down. Look at the rapid fire combinations. Second count put here on Drago. This is an exquisite performance at the highest level from Arta Kishenko. A man at the top of his game, and he has done it. Oh, yeah. TKO in the third round. Drago's eyes weren't there, and Winesley, the referee, has said no more. The ref asked him, do you want to stop it? He said, yeah, I want to stop it. That was the end of it. So it was good, good, good position by the referee to double check after that standing eight count and see what happens. And wow, good position. And really, I really am impressed with Kinshaco. He's really stepped up his game a lot more. He has now won four fights undefeated since joining Mike's gym last November. And there you saw the trademark style of Mike's gym come to the forefront. That tenacity, the combination work, and throw every technique with a palpable force of will. When you watch the likes of Melvin Manoff, you watch Bada Hurry, this is what they do, what Kashenko just did at 70 kilos. You know, I always say that one of the things that, that doesn't happen very much is guys are sitting behind jabs and getting themselves set up and getting themselves in position. But guys from Mike's gym Ladies don't need to use the jab because they're the throwing combos off of all the power from punches. The it's incredible watch these guys fight. Look at this. This is and like watching Bada Hurry in a 154 TKO pound body. From the blue corner, a turkey. Marta Koshenko moves through to the semi-final round of the Fast and Furious tournament. Kango Drago is out of the running. And he does so, Koshenko, with a little bit of welting on that left rib cage, but nothing to phase him. The legs look fine, the face looks fine. And there's the brackets as I stand. Drago out. Are we going to see a dream semi-final, Koshenko and Sauer? With Sauer against Harold Gregorian up next. Andy Sauer comes in as the tournament favourite. And when we return here on HDNet, we'll see how the favourite fares. Sauer and Gregorian next. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to the Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Yop Uvida. So we are about to see the tournament favorite, Andy Sauer, take on quite an underdog, the biggest underdog of the tournament, Harut Gregorian. Sauer comes in the favorite overall, plus 150 okay. to win the tournament. Gregorian at plus 1250. The number one seed 
and the number eight. Just... You talk about great fighters. Andy Sauer, arguably the most decorated kick fighter in history. Two-time K1 Max champion, a world champion in the WKA, ISKA, WMTA, WPKA, the list goes on. Three-time S Cup no shootboxing world champion no in 02, battles. 04 and no 08. Battles. No holding, no shooting throw with the lower back. Off the man, come on, Brady, is break, stop, stop, y'all, okay? This is a massive opportunity defense, here for Gregorian. Mike, I gotta ask you, it's happened the first few fights, the referee goes in and he's checking the, checking the corners, he smells the gloves before he walks out. Is he looking for something added to the gloves, that's why he's smelling them? Or? Yeah, it's been a case here in Europe Coach a few times, particularly if you remember when Jerome LeBanner fought Mark Hunt in Paris many moons ago, that some corners have been alleged to put liniment or put oil on the gloves to impair the other fighter's vision, rub the gloves on the eyes. So in Europe, they're very particular about checking the gloves Round and sniffing the gloves check. just to make sure that no illegal substances Round have been one. rubbed on after the glove check. Because don't forget, in kickboxing, unlike mixed martial arts, the glove check is done backstage and not done ringside. Okay. I was just hoping the ref didn't have some kind of weird photo. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Just love smelling leather. Gregorian off to a fast start here, trying to work the knees against Sauer in the corner. But really, that's the best way to beat Sauer is get after him right away, show him no mercy, just step right up on top and see what happens. Now, Sauer is wearing his shootboxing long tights, which, if you recall, in his K1 Max career at the later stages, he was banned from wearing. He always wears them, though, as a, an homage to his shootboxing background. As I said, a three-time S-Cup world shootboxing champion, Andy Sauer. Has gone six and four in his last 10, Sauer. 13 and seven in his last 20. Beautiful left oh. hook from Gregorian. Sauer's got to get off the ropes here. Gregorian cannot let him out of the corner. Don't know if knees were necessarily the best option there for Harrop Gregorian. And now Sauer drifts back to center ring, but this is a fantastic start for Gregorian. He's got a great high pace, but can Gregorian keep it up? This is one of those deals, the guy like Sauer, you don't want to spend too much energy trying to put him out too early, because he will come back, he will recover. Listen to the crowd here at the Forest National. Traditionally, Andy Sauer, a very slow starter. Look for him to really pick up the pace midway through the second round and bring it home strongly should we go into the third. Overhand right by Sauer again. Gregorian puts him on the ropes. And the referee breaks. Gregorian, 14 knockouts in 41 victories, seven losses out of the Bulldog Jim in Antwerp. Trains under Daniela Summers, former boxer Daniela Summers. Nice right hand from Gregorian. We last saw him on HDNet at the It's Showtime fight in Lyon, France. He was impressive there. Good jab from Sauer. Outside leg kick from Sauer. Sauer looks off a little bit. He's, got, he's not stepping forward at all. He doesn't look like he's limping or anything. So he doesn't look like his foot's hurt, but he's, he's definitely not stepping up the pace like he normally does about this time. You've got to watch these leg kicks of Sauer. They may not look like a lot, but they are some of the most effective leg kicks in the world. Not necessarily for power, but for precision. He throws them just like Ernesto Hust used to, where his shin can literally cut your thigh. And Sauer seems to do what Hust used to, find one spot and just pulverize it over and over and over again. Again, Gregorian backs him into the corner, but allows Sauer to drift onto the ropes and back to the ring here. Gregorian's got to keep Sauer pinned, put him back against the ropes as much as he can, because when Andy's in centering like this, and this is where Andy really does fight. Well, that's surprising me, because at least in my, my book, I, I believe that, uh, that Sauer lost that, that round because he was getting pushed so much, but I really don't see any major, major damage. There's a couple small knees that slid through. And like you said, Mike, it's probably one of the worst times to throw that knee is right there in the corner. But really no major damage has been done after the first 15, 30, you know, 15, 20 seconds of the round. So yeah, Sauer lost the round, but I think he's fine. And I, I really honestly think that Gregorian might be running out, might have used too much gas in that first round. We're gonna find out in the second round when it comes through. I'd agree, a 10-9 round for Gregorian in the first. Sauer, who comes in tonight off back-to-back -to -back wins over Yoshihiro Sato in Japan and Lucien Uzni in Amsterdam, both by decision. Well, part of the pomp pageantry to show that is at showtime. In the corner there of Andy Sauer, one of my favorites, the great Andre Manat. 
has trained so many brilliant fighters over the years from my Giro gym in Amsterdam. The hey, likes hey, of hey. Remy Bonjaski. I remember hey. once he fought Sugar Ray Sefo back as a cruiserweight in the old New Zealand kickboxing days. Here we go, second round. Good right hand from Sauer. Look for him to really pick up the pace here. Gregorian is game, and he can pull off upsets, Gregorian. He has beaten Christian McGimby in the past. Inside leg kick from Sauer, checks the low kick. Sauer's defense, spot on at the moment. Gregorian just forces Gregorian back to the centre of the ring. Nicely done from Sauer. Yeah, and that's, and that's strictly because Gregorian decided to grab the head and go for some knees at the centre, and that allowed Sauer to get his hips in, not get hit, and push back. That's what I said in the first round. Gregorian is putting him against the ropes, putting him in the corner, but should not be going for the clinch and knee. Should continue to unload with the hands. This time Sauer closes the distance. Again, Gregorian having no real luck with the knees. Boxing is the prowess of Gregorian. It's what he needs to rely on here. But already you can see how much more of the center part of the ring Sauer is commanding that he didn't have in the first round, Frank. He started to push himself back to the center, wants to make sure he keeps the space. He realizes he spent so much time against the ropes, he's going to have a problem. You know, trying to win this round, he does the exact same thing. He knows how much higher his, pet, his punch rate is now, too. Hey. We are no holding. Okay. just over halfway through the Fight. second round. This is traditionally where Sauer really picks up the pace. And that's a nice combination. That'll score for it. Gregorian has him in the corner here. And Sauer nicely done. Scoots out the back door. That was a mark of experience. Keeps the fight from stopping. Fight. Allows him to keep getting more points scored. In Andy Sauer, you're talking about a man who made his pro debut back in 1998, who has 151 fights with 139 wins. Gregorian's power is lacking here now. Good right hand from Gregorian. But just not starts behind it. The oh. left hand from Sauer stopped him in his tracks. You see how Gregorian is not pouncing on Sauer as he did in the first round when he had him in the corner? He's looking lethargic now, Gregorian. Yeah, he slowed way down. His power's way off now. He's taking a lot more solid hard hits from Sauer. If the first round went to Gregorian 10-9, the, the second round goes to Sauer 10-9 with one more round remaining. A much better round for Andy Sauer in the second after Gregorian took the first and our scorecards 10-9. We have an even fight after two. In the second round, Sauer powered up, and Gregorian really slowed down. It is now time for Gregorian to put the foot down, press Sauer against the ropes into a corner, don't rely on the knees, but instead just try and overwhelm him with the handiwork. Sauer's getting a lot better, stepping up his pace a lot more, and that's really what's helping out with this fight. Him stepping forward and really trying to keep himself off the ropes is what really won that second round. A sellout crowd here at the Forest National in Belgium. Interestingly, this was the scene, the stadium where Jean-Claude Van Damme once won a world kickboxing title many moons ago on the undercard of Dominic Valerio fight here at the Forest National. He won by a spinning hook kick, ripping his opponent's nose in the process. Third and final round. Nice by Gregorian. Backing up Sauer. Sauer got munching knee. Good start from Gregorian to this round. What both men also have to be aware of, as both are taking quite a bit of punishment here. Beautiful right hand by Sauer. 
is one of them is going to face a relatively fresh and unscathed Arthur Koshenko in the semi-finals. It's a very daunting thought there, Frank. I know, I was just thinking, you think any kind of injury is going to make it a tough next fight. So <clears throat> both these guys have got to try to get out of here quick without spending too much energy. Left hook, step through knee by Gregorian. Fight. At least Gregorian knows he can mark his career by getting a victory tonight. He's picked up the pace back to the first round like he did in the first round. And Sauer still is coming back in hard and heavy with that straight left. Curls the overhand right to Sauer. Eats a jab. Gregorian now against the ropes. Wears an uppercut. The head rocked back. And it is a back and forth contest here in the third. Fight. Halfway through the round. Beautiful body shot by Sauer. He just caught Gregorian on the elbow. He sensed that Andy is turning up that pace once again. Good left hook lands. It really was a shock the first time Sauer won the K1 Max in 2005. No one was surprised though when he became the first ever two time champion in 2007. A class act, a class human being. Fights for his family. His father is disabled. Ooh. Nice uppercut from Gregorian. Right hand just missed the orbital. Hey, stop, 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 Sauer stop. claiming hey. a headbutt. What'd you have to find? Fight. Good outside leg kick from Sauer. And a high left round. Andy Sauer may try and go kleptomaniac now and steal the fight in the final 30 seconds. He's got the better pace, he's got the better angles. Gregorian fighting to the very end. Illegal strike there from Sauer. He should have known better. And he's going to go down to the wire. In quarterfinal number two. Who takes it? Both men pump their fists into the air. Yeah, the love, crowd give a solid ovation. I love when these guys fight, especially Sauer, because Sauer makes his opponents, no matter what kind of style they have, he always makes his opponents step their game up. Sauer comes in so hard and so heavy and, and has such a high punch kick rate. We saw, you know, in the middle of the, I was saying in the first round, he does not pick up the pace like he normally does. He started that in the second round. He started just coming after it. And Gregorian tried to match as much as he could. We saw as we got later in the third rounds, all he wanted to do was tie up as much as he could to try to slow Sauer down. But half the time he got rotated around and got turned to the side. He got hit one time, he got hit in the behind, but most of the time he got hit in the side. And it's, it's, Sauer's amazing to watch, right, technically those. speaking. But this fight's really close. If we have a draw, which it could have been well be, it will be an extension round. Sour slightly tip it, maybe 10 9 first Gregorian, 10 9 second Sour, could be 10 all in the third, which would push us into an extension. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an extra round. Indeed, it is a draw. It was as clear cut as we thought, Frank. First round Gregorian, second to Sour, third a draw. Now, this favors Andy Sour because Gregorian looks the more fatigued of the two. Who this favors in particular, as we see Daniela Summers there in the corner of Gregorian, who is a, has a big smile backstage, must be Arthur Koshenko. Yeah, he wants this fight to go on as long as possible. He, he would love for one of these guys to get cut open here in this round, too. The winner to get cut wide open. You know, it'd be perfect for him. One fight. They are going to have to fight three minutes more. Round four. Sauer's got energy for days, and his, his power stays the same throughout. Now, folks, wherever you're watching this on HDNet, try and score the round down yourself. Look at what techniques are landing by each man. Not necessarily how much they throw, but what is effectively landing. Body shot lands for Sauer. It'll score for him. Nobody landing in the clinch, so no knees are scored. Sauer's hook lands. And his leg kick, so too Gregorian's. These are how they put the points down here in the extension round. Uppercut yeah. by Gregorian was a nice one. It is still an even fight on my scorecard with 45 seconds gone in extension. Right. Right. 
Outside lead kick from Sauer. Gregorian goes to the inside lead fight. Double forearms guard from Sauer. Wow, great, great catch and sweep with that leg. Stepped in and tried to get a nice quick hook across the top. Gregorian did, but he missed it. Sauer on one foot, even though his leg out of position, still has great defense. Gregorian just got in too close. His knees have been ineffective the whole fight. He needs to stay at boxing range. Sauer constantly bouncing around on the balls of his feet. There's two things I think with Sauer that really help him out come these later rounds. There's one, the first round, first half of the round, he stays pretty defensive and nothing really lands. He doesn't, he doesn't waste that much energy. Then when he starts to pick up the pace, almost everything he throws, he's got great accuracy with. So he's, he's hitting at least 80% of his shots. And he's a great, great inside boxer, great inside puncher. Not dirty boxer like you'd see in MMA, but like in kickboxing, he's inside. He's great on the inside portion, great uppercuts. Good combination from Gregorian. Caught him with two left hooks, make it three. Those will score well for Gregorian. He has not done yet with one minute remaining. Sauer backs him up momentarily. Locks on a tie clinch. Nice knee to the upper right rib cage from Sauer. It almost folds him in half with the second knee. Uppercut from Sauer. Both men digging deep now. Into the reserve tanks. Deep into the well of fortitude. And this crowd responds. Corking knee from Sauer, nicely done as Gregorian tried for the meet and greet. Dropping body shot from Sauer. 20 seconds remains. Has Gregorian perhaps got a Hail Mary shot? Look at Sauer grunting, grimacing behind every shot he throws now. Gregorian, uppercut, left hand. Sal with the cork knee, and there it is. End of the extension round. You know, Frank, to me, still a very close fight. I would not be upset if they said a second extension round, though I do think Sauer tips it over slightly. I think Sauer stole it enough on this one. He, he kept inside, he punched more, and it wasn't just his constant, constant ability to, to keep inside. He was landing more of the bigger shots on the inside game. That's really what helped out. I really liked the way that Gregorian stayed inside and kept punching, but he started losing a lot of his power, and the more and more the extra round went on, the less solid his defense became. So even though he might have been hitting Sauer slightly, Gregorian was getting hit hard after almost every exchange. You see there, you get a catch of two left hooks right in a row from Sauer. Comes back and gets overhand right, and all that's because, you know, in the second round or the third round, Gregorian would have stopped it with his, with his defense, but he lost it entirely as he got tired. Gregorian always impresses me every time I see him. He impressed me in Lyon. He just needs to increase his repertoire, not rely Ladies too much on his boxing. Start to bring the knees, the leg kicks, the head contest. kicks more to play. The judges decided four against one from the blue corner. There it is. We indeed have the dream semi-final matchup between the two favorites. Andy Sauer will take on Arta Gashenko. But you've got to ask the question, how much punishment did Sauer take? And will he be ready to front up to the ring yet again? in just a short amount of time. Gregorian can hold his head up proudly. He came in as the complete underdog at the plus 1250 overall to win the tournament, and he pushed the outright favorite, Andy Sauer, to an extension round. Folks, we'll move into bracket number B on the draw very soon, which will see Murat Tureki of Turkey take on the Lightning, Chris Nagimbi and Robin van Rusmalen take on the explosive Chahid Ulad Alhaj. When it's showtime, Fast and Furious returns here on HDNet. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Mufadel El Khazahoui. And this fight is sponsored by Top King. This one is going to be good. Quarterfinal number three sees the third overall favorite, Chris Nagimbi, the current It Showtime middleweight champion, taking on the tough Turk, Murat Durecki. The crowd will be behind Durecki. He resides here in Belgium, though of Turkish descent. Born in Antwerp, Belgium, to a family originally from Konya, known as the Citadel of Islam in Turkey's Anatolia region. Okay, so Karen, good luck. 
Nagimbi, who you last saw here on HDNet from Jets. Lyon, it's showtime Jets. event, where he Jets. won with a spectacular Jets. jumping knee, retaining Ready. his world title over Willy Burrell of Mongolia. Now, interestingly, Nagimbi won the title wow. in Athens in 2010 wow. with a five-round decision over Murat Tureki. So can Tureki get some form of revenge here tonight? Michael Chavello, Frank Trigg with you. Nagimbi, who was born in Kinshasa, Zaire, now fighting out of Valkensvard in the Netherlands. He was born with a weak heart. Doctors found it would make him hard for him to survive his first year. Spent his child in the African country. His family was forced to leave Africa when he was just 11 years old due to the civil war and the fact that his father had served in the political party of the recently ousted president, Mobutu Sese Seko. There's the jumping knee from Nagimbi. He's had a bit of a haircut since we saw him in Lyon, where he was sporting quite the Jackson 5 Afro. I actually like that haircut better. <laughs> Do you ever sport the Afro yourself, Frank, as a young yeah. boy? Yeah, 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 full. Very luxurious, my hair was. <laughs> <laughs> I can't comment, Frank. It's been 13 years since my last strand of hair. See, it's, it's funny, I still have hair. I can grow a full head right now, I just don't want to. Ooh, jumping knee, right hand from Nagimbi. Oh, beautiful popping short. Referee doesn't put a count here on Dereki, but it's a great start from Nagimbi. He's very reminiscent of a middleweight, Remy Bunjaski, is Chris Nagimbi. He does come in here tonight on a terrific five-fight win streak, dating back to 2009. Two-time WKA World Muay Thai champion. On his first WKA belt in 2005, a third-round knockout of Thai style Kunpon. On his second title in 2007 against Canadian Shane Campbell, who he decisioned in Richmond, Virginia. Right-hand lead snakes it through the defense there, does Nagimbi. The ref is doing a great job. Every time on the break, he's getting his back to the ref and throws another shot on the inside right after his call break. So right when the Gimby stopped fighting, he gets a knee shot right into the, the leg or right into the, into the hip area. Tarecki looking to put Nagimbi against the ropes. Tags with the right hand. Double butterfly punch almost there from the Turk. They lock up in tango against the ropes. The referee calls break. Uppercut from Nagimbi. He likes to fire the shots from awkward angles, Chris Nagimbi. I tell you what, Frank, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet too, Chris Nagimbi. Stop back, come on, stop back, stop back. Tells me he's a big fan of HDNet, though I don't know how he gets it in Europe. Other than means, I could say that aren't <laughs> commonly legal. He does well, love watching HDNet fights. They're probably legal in Europe. <laughs> Ten seconds left on the clock here in the first. That won't be a knockdown. Nagimbi's got one of the best jumping knees that he throws almost like it's a front kick or, or a quick quick inside kick to the inside line. He just he jumps that knee up all the time. I would say he is the premier flying knee artist in the world, Chris Nagimbi. He'll take the first round here against Murat Dereki. A little bit more on the background of Dereki. For those of you who don't know, it's actually a very sad family story for Murat. He was born the youngest of three siblings. His sister Nure died at the age of four due to a brain tumor. And his brother Erkan died in 2004 at 29 years old in a traffic accident. Comes in tonight going six and four in his last 10 directly, including a win over Gago Drago in 2009. He was actually the first ever It's Showtime 70 kilo world champion. As I said, Nagimbi won that title from Dereki in Athens in Dereki's last fight. A little bit of welting under the left eye there of the Turk. Coach is out of the ring, please. Come on. Corner. Corner. Come on. He has a hard riddle to solve. Chris Nagimbi comes in at plus 215 in this fight. Direcki. Round two. I should say Nagimbi at minus 190, Direcki at plus 250. That's a good spread on, on this fight. It, it's, it's obviously solid simply because that. Uh, oh, right hand tags him. I was just going to say. Wow. Last time there was a slight knockdown as well, and last time they fought, and it just happened again. Okay. No doubt about that one. Oh, yeah. Nagimbi opening up like a house of fire. Looking to finish here on the second. Jumping me! Have a look at Chris Nagimbi go now! Just manhandling directly. 
And the Gila does a good job that when Durecki steps inside, he completes the punch. So if he misses with the fist, he'll catch you with the inside of his forearm, he'll catch you with the inside of his bicep. And right there against the ropes the last time, he caught Durecki straight inside of the head with his bicep. It's a nice Muay Thai dump there by Durecki. And just a note for mixed martial arts fans, because I've been preaching this for years. You see how Durecki ended up in the mount? More MMA fighters should try it out. The Muay Thai dump to a full mount or side control of an opponent. Anyway, I digress. Back to the kickboxing. Very good point, though. Very valid point. <laughs> I actually try to start using it in my training. Try to get on top that way. Stick through Nate from the Gimby. Uppercut from Derecki. He's just pulling his punches in a little too much here, Murat Derecki. Needs to get some more extension. That's better. Right hand, uppercut, right hook. Three punches landing for Murat Derecki. Well, Murat's trying to come back in now with a great, great uh, jumping knee. He got caught by two left hooks right after it. The winner of this one will take on either Shahid Olad Al Hajj or Robin van der Smalen in semi final number two. If you just joined us, semi final number one is set with Andy Sauer to take on Arta Kashenka. Referee's going to take a look at that huge welt under the eye of Derecki. It's been cut now. It's quite a nice hematoma. Oh, look at that. Good right hand lead from Derecki. And you can bet that McGimby, for as nice of a guy he is outside the ring, is going to go after that cut inside the ring. Yeah, rightfully so. You, know, you want to get out of this fight as quick as you can. You know, whether it's, especially when you fight another time tonight, whether or not it's simply by cutting him and getting the fight to stop it or knocking him out, you want to get out of the fight as quickly as possible. I dare say, though, Derecki has tagged McGimby with several shots in this fight that. A more power puncher like Arta Kashenko may have dropped Nagimbi with. Yeah, I, believe, I think so too. I think Kashenko's right now is in the best spot to win the whole thing. Now we've gone through the, the top side of the bracket and seeing what's left simply because he had such a good rest before he has to meet up with Sauer later tonight. Try to maze in the center of the ring, a little bit scrappy. Come on. Good counter left from Nagimbi. Derecki catches him with the right hand! The three will put a count here. No. Well, there's no reason why he should have stopped it there. He warned Nagimbi for turning his back. I thought he may have put a standing count on him. I think a standing eight count in that position would have been justified. He spun him around enough to yeah. turn his back on his opponent. Could have stopped him, put an eight count standing. Yeah, I believe so too. Derecki could feel a little hard done by there. Two rounds down, one remaining. Oh, Derecki's cut on his nose as well as on his eye. Three cuts under the eye, on the nose, above the eye. Jeez. He's starting to get lit up, and that's all right hands coming at him. That's what he's getting hit by, is all these right hands. So you got to be careful. Now, going into this third round, what's going to happen? Because you see, every time you get your head pulled down, you're going to get dropped. And that's a right hand that actually put him on the canvas. It was a straight, short uh, right hand on the inside as soon as he got let go. It's a big deal. you got to be careful now. You get knocked down once. I know he's recovered. He's back in there. But directly, he's got to be careful because all the cuts are on that side of his head. He's got to keep his left hand up to keep from getting hit. Nice takedown right in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. Coach is out of the ring, please. Come on. Last round. Check out. Good luck. That could have Fight. easily been a count there. Three. Referee moved in yeah. and stopped Derecki. Derecki could have followed through. So, as I said, may feel a little hard done by it, but it's in the history books now. Third and final round. The Gimby, nice one, drew up the center. Quarter turn off to his right. Solid head kick. Directing the right hand. Drake has a lot of problems right here. You know, he obviously lost the second round. He really did come back. It may not be a 10 8 due to the knockdown, but it's definitely going to be at least a 10 9 where he lost it. And then he lost the first round, so now he's in a position where he's got to open up to get to finish this fight. The other problem here with Murat Tureki, and it's a common mistake that fighters will make against the fighter that likes to throw a flying knee as Nagimi does, is you'll see how flat footed Murat is. Whereas Nagimi moves a lot on the balls of his feet, so he's already or always ready to springboard and work those jumping knees, work those high round kicks, work the front kicks. Derecki is much more flat-footed. It doesn't all go well for him. 
And it's why the left side of the face is being lit up so much by the right hand, because he's flat-footed, he hasn't got the reaction time to get out of the way of the right hand of Nagindi. Wow, he almost, that almost looked like he closed his eyes and threw his four punches and completely missed. Referee again, cautioning Nagimbi not to turn. The crowd is jeering Nagimbi a little. As you'd expect, given that Jarecki is a Belgian resident. Nice right hand, left hook, and once again, Frank, that's what I spoke oh. about earlier. Had that been Kishenko, had it even been Sauer, Nagimbi would have gone down. Yeah, it's over. The fight's over. What's happening now is that, as we're seeing with these guys are losing these fights, and, and I think Nagimbi's actually going to win this fight, is that as he gets later in the rounds, so their the defense is dropping. And with guys like Sauer and Kishenko, that's the end of the fight. So, yeah, you survived in the third round. It's a great fight. But obviously, we get, we get starched. He's got to keep his hands up. He's got to get smart. Now that he's been yelled at twice for not turning his back, Nagimbi's really getting torn up. Murata's stepping forward, getting after him, and understanding now how, how I think he's kind of figured out what he can do to win. Unfortunately, I think it's a little bit too late, though. Curly right hand from Tarecki. Nagimbi looking a little fatigued now, breathing out of his mouth. The chance momentarily went up for Murat. Murat. Can he find something here, Murat Tarecki? Look at the punishment that the left side of his face and his nose has taken the Turk. Both men now throwing some sloppy salvos, both fatigued. Oh, nice knee. Murat did duck his way out of it, but I think it caught him just a little bit on the chin. Right hand from Durecki. But he's a spent force here. Final seconds of the fight. And, and it should be Chris Nagimbi who advances through to semi-final number two. Some damage under the right eye and on the forehead of Nagimbi. It'll be interesting to see how his corner crew go to work on those injuries during his short break. Tarecki. Three cuts on his face. Will not move through here. Yeah. Referee discautioning for the forearm across the throat. Not permitted under these rules. It was full tie rules that have no problem with it. Good right hand there from Gregorian. I should say from Turecki. Directly steps in so when he had his energy, he stepped in so heavy with those punches. I think he could have, if he had just a little more energy and didn't get knocked down the second, he might have been able to steal this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner of this contest by unanimous decision. The winner from the red corner, Chris. No doubt about it, Chris Nagimbi is now on a six-fight winning streak dating back to 2009. The It's Showtime 70 kilo champion. Is he on his way to becoming the It's Showtime Fast and Furious tournament champion? The competition will be stiff and he'll face the winner of our next fight, quarterfinal number four, when Shahid Ulan Al Hajj of Morocco takes on the Dutchman Robin Van Rusmalen. That when we return, it's showtime here on HDNet from the Forest National in Belgium. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to the showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Mouvadel El Ghazawi. And this fight is sponsored by Facebook.com slash It's Showtime. Quarterfinal number four is upon us as Robin Van Rusmalen gets set to take on Shahid Ulad Al Hajj. Van Rusmalen at yes. a team Golden Glory. Van Rusmalen comes in tonight to win the tournament overall at plus 800. Shahid at plus 1200. In this particular fight, 
Al Hudge at minus 105, Jets. Vandal Smarlin at minus Bam. 125. Ready? The voice, Michael Bam. Sabello, Frank Trick with you from the Forest National wow. in Belgium. It's Chahid in the red. Vandal Smarlin, Golden Glory in his corner, also trains under his father, William Vandal Smarlin, who once knocked out Vitaly Klitschko during Klitschko's kickboxing days. You know, a lot of people don't know that Vitaly Klitschko was a six-time amateur and professional kickboxing world champion. Had a record of 34-1 and one with 22 knockouts. Really? Indeed. Wow. That was awesome. I knew he kickboxed. I didn't realize he was that good at it, though. Vandros Marlin comes in here tonight off a loss to Muhammad Kamal by decision in May. Before the loss to Kamal, he was riding a terrific five-fight winning streak, including wins over Chahid and William Deander. Chahid, who really shot to fame last year in Korea, where he put on one of the all-time great fights against Mike Zambides in the K1 Max Final 16. Arguably the most action-packed K1 fight of all time. Maybe now one of the most downloaded K1 fights of all time, too. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. Zambides versus Chahid. You know, Mike, one of the things I do like about this tournament-style action here in kickboxing is there's no feeling up here. They, they step right into it. They know they got three rounds. They know for them to get through. They got to win every single round to get into the next, to get into the, to the, to the semis and into the finals. These guys come after it right from the very beginning. We've seen nothing but hard kicks and hard punches the entire time. Both guys are sustaining. They're, they're accepting all these blows defensively and they're not having any problems right now. Shahiru comes in tonight off that horrific groin shot he took from Giorgio Petrosian in Leon in May. One of the worst groin strikes you'll ever see. Now, if you've got a weak stomach, block your ears for a moment as I tell you this information. After that groin strike in Leon, Shahid was taken to the emergency room at the Leon Hospital because his testicles had twisted around each other. Oh, a little torsion. That's how bad it was. <laughs> wow. Yeah, pretty bad. Oh. Needs to find some consistency here tonight, Shahid. Gone four and six in his last ten. That said, though, every fight does deliver action in droves. His last winner decision over Rafael Dudek in Athens was back in December. Vandros Marlin comes into this tournament, I suppose, as the replacement for Giorgio Petrosian. Petrosian would have been the outright to win this tournament. It would have been Petrosian, Sauer, then Koshenko. So Vandros Marlin comes in here to make up the numbers. Has also been trained in the past by Peter Ertz, Robin van der Smalen. Beautiful body shot outside by kick. Into the, the, the first round, a good one for Robin van der Smalen. Great position, great technique. He steps in. I like the fact that he's typically going back to a set of series every time he comes in. It's a combination sequence every time he goes in. He's not throwing one punch or one kick. He's coming after everything. He's going to come high, he's going to come low, and he keeps his defense high and tight every single time. So really, Shahid was expending a lot of energy and not getting any kind of benefit out of it. Beautiful at Showtime, dancing girls, always part of these cards and where they're held around the world. As we're ready to roll into round two of quarterfinal number four, the winner will take on Krista Gimbi in semi-final two. Hope you're enjoying it, folks, on HDNet. Don't forget, if you are on Twitter, make sure you do follow us at HDNet Fights. While you're there, at Chevello Voice, at Frank Trigg. Second round, first round, unofficially, will give the way of Robin van der Smalen. Shahid, a Dutch citizen. Born in Morocco, now fights out of Bergen op Zoom in the Netherlands. Trained by his brother Hamid Olad Al Hajj. Here comes Van der Smalen again, barreling against the corner. Beautiful body shot, right hand to the bicep. And Chahid said, You didn't get a clean shot off on me. And now it's my turn. And the whole sequence started, he got caught with a right hand. Chahid did, and he kind of stumbled. So rightfully so, Van der Smalen went after it. You know, Robin's really smart. He's not going to stand there and just and just let a guy, you know, curl up in the corner. He's going to try and score as many points as he can. 
But honestly, you know, of those 75 punches he threw, I think maybe two slid in. Douglas Marlin, beautiful virgin's defense. Nothing penetrating. Look how he walks down Shahid here. He'll try and put him against the ropes again. Nice right hand, puts him in the corner. And against the ropes. Shahid's got to get back to center ring. He's starting to get dominated now. I mean, he, he is throwing back a little bit, like you see there, but he's really getting pushed around. There is nothing overly exciting about Robin van der Smalen, but what he does is systematic, is methodical, and as you said, Frank, just breaks down opponents, keeps walking forward, keeps putting down points. 13 knockouts, 29 career victories for Robin van der Smalen. 17 knockouts in 38 career victories for Shahid Olad al Hajj. Flipping left hand from Van der Smalen. The Gimbi, who did take a little bit of punishment in the previous quarterfinal against Derecki. We'll be watching this one on the closed circuit screens backstage. Sizing up his next opponent, who at the moment looks like it'll be Robin van der Smalen. Unless Chahid can start to fire. Hasn't really thrown the legs at all, Chahid. Oh, nice overhand right between the eyes from Van Rus Marlin. Best shot of the fight so far. Jeez, he slid it in there so quick and so tight. He's on. He's this on. is a standing count now. Yeah. You see Chahid drop the gloves, turn the back, spit out the mouth guard. He wants no more. He's done. This is over. They throw the towel in. It is good night, Irene. Oh, he broke a tooth. Wow. That's why he stopped. He broke a tooth. Robin van Rusmalen, the replacement for Giorgio Petrosian, has come out of seemingly nowhere to make it through. Jeez. That tooth has been blasted. Yeah, and that's the overhand right, cut him on the opposite yep. side of his head. It came in so quick, he was looking right at it, and he came in and smacked him. Hit a mouthpiece in. Now, obviously, his jaw was open when he got hit, because otherwise, that, it wouldn't have broke that tooth out like that, but he shattered that, too. Wow. My word, what a power performance from Robin van der Smalen. Take a look at this. Oof, there it was. There it was. And he's fighting. He's trying to stay in it. He's fighting. He's waiting for the ref to come in and guard him up. Over the top, comes in, slides it in. You were dead right, Frank. I thought the overhand right caught him between the eyes, but it caught him on the top lip. Jeez, it was so quick. The power and precision to turn the knuckles over like that and break a guy's tooth out, Frank, in an overhand right. Well, not, not only did break a tooth out, but the mouth with a full mouth piece. That's incredible. Because the opponent has surrendered the winner from the blue corner, Robin van Rosmalen. Gives a whole new meaning to TKO, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, tooth no. KO. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder how they're going to fix that thing. Robin van Rosmalen, unscathed, is through to the semi-finals. He will take on Chris Nikimi in semi-final number two. Semi-final number one, the blockbuster, the dream bout, Arta Kishenko versus Andy Sauer. Those two fights, plus many of our super fights still to come, including Marek Gregorian and Yassin Beta. This super fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to the Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Joop Ubeda. And this fight is sponsored by the Mercure Hotel. It is time for a super fight between Yassin okay. Beta, oh, the Beast, and Marat Gregorian. Oh. Gregorian, we saw his older brother, Harut, no be eliminated from no the Ant-Man tournament earlier on tonight. No elbows. No holding, no cleansing and all of that. After making one break, it's very stop your blow, okay? It's a good fight. Michael, I honestly have to ask you, and I think I've gone over this before. Does anybody actually understand the ref in the middle there? I mean, most no. of you guys don't speak English to begin with. No, no one does. Okay. You just nod and hope for the best. Okay. But, but, I mean, there's not that much information he's giving anyway that you need to know about, fight. but still it's... Three wow. rounds of action. Wow. It is Gregorian in the black with white stripe. <laughs> Beta, the white with black stripe. Michael Chavello, Frank Trick with you. Gregorian comes in the favorite minus 325. Beta at plus 265. Beta, a record of 31, 8 and 3, oh, 7 knockouts. Oh. 
Gregorian, 31, 4 and 1 with 17 knockouts. Hey, come on. Keep an eye on Marat Gregorian. Simon Roots, the chief of It's Showtime, has mooted hey, Gregorian as their next big star. He's beaten the likes of Mohamed Kamal, losses to the likes of Johan Lidon in Lyon. Trained by Daniela Summers. Beta, who's taken on the likes of Robin van Rusmalen and Karim Geijer. I expect a slow start to this one. Yeah, I've already been yelled at twice by the ref to get the pace a little bit. Compared to the other fights so far tonight, this is a slower pace start. They've took high knee from Gregorian. Nice jab off the ropes from him. Both men a little flat footed here in the opening round. Beautiful dipping liver shot from Beta. Just no power here from Beta at the moment. It's almost like a glorified sparring session. He is switching between southpaw and orthodox stance, is Yassin Beta. Nice right hand from Gregorian, then goes to the body. Beta just ties up the arms and the referee pulls break. Same problem that his brother has. When he gets inside there, he gets close, he immediately grabs the head and goes for the knee, and that allows Beitar to get out of there. He's in a great position, had him tied up, could have went to the body a couple times, kicked him once or twice low, and then came back up to the head and put him down. But I don't know why that is with the Gregorian brothers, particularly given that their coach is a former boxing champion. Nice left hand from Gregorian. And Beitar doing a quick count of his teeth. Turning right from Gregorian. Beitar off to a very slow start here. Uppercut was nice. That's the first power shot we've seen him actually hit and land. He's, um, he really does come out as a slow starter, but not this slow. And he's really not, like you said earlier, it's, he's, it's a glorified sparring session, not really doing anything. Till now. Now he's going to step it up a little bit, but he's got to hurry up, pick up this pace, and get some more power shots if he wants to win this round. Gregorian left hook, uppercut, missed the target, almost took out the ring lights. Left hook came nowhere near it. Front kick to the midsection from Beta. Another front kick off the back leg, make it you trip lick it there from Yasin Beta. And he puts the jab on the schnoggen. The quite sizable proboscis of Marat Gregorian. <laughs> High right round kick, Gregorian caught it on the forearm. End of the first round. What a barn burner by any stretch of the imagination. If we are going to tilt it though, we will do so in favor of Marat Gregorian. Daniela Summer in the corner there of Gregorian. Tough pace in, inside, really puts Beitar on, on this hump, and then right here, he jumps up top and goes to the knee, and that allows everything to stop and come back inside. There's no reason for him to go this deep inside and try to tie up. And Gregorian does throw a lot of punches off the ropes. He is in a better position. That's why I like to see him do more of it. He hasn't been doing it. He's really, really it's the best way to keep Beitar off his feet and keep him really unbalanced. Daniela Summers, the trainer there of Marat Gregorian, her own record in boxing, 12 and 3. A 26% KO ratio as we see Arta Kishenko backstage with Coach Mike Passanier and please. Melvin Manoff preparing for his semi final hey, against Andy Sauer. Hey, let's go. Daniela Summers, her last we fight back in 2000. She won her last fight, one last three in a row, of course. Round last two. fight was against Brenda Drexel in Belgium, in Antwerp. Second round. right round from Beta. Gregorian with the outside leg kick. We haven't seen a lot of kicking thus far. It's been mostly a boxing contest. Beta springboards off the ropes. Nicely done. Good position to use his pressure. Lean back up his ropes and using like a, a rubber band to throw him out. But unfortunately, he didn't stay off the ropes. He's back on him again. And this is one of the things that, that is going to make the judges think that he's losing this fight because he, he spends most of his time on his back against the ropes, having to defensively punch out. This is what you get when you get two men who like to fight on the inside, as Beta and Gregorian do. They're not big at range fighters. High right round. Still no power for Beta. And. Yes. Takes one yep. south of the border. Come on. That doesn't work. Come on. Come fight. Okay, 
it uh, will be really? hurting for the Belgian boys choir after that one. Just like that, the ref just grabs you, throws you a couple of times. <laughs> Back at it, go. Wow. That's how they roll in Europe. Inside fly kick hey. from Beta. Oh. Look out, eh? Yes, they're doing offset, eh? So, come on. Fight. Again, no real starch behind these shots from Yasin Beta. Gregorian threading that left hook nicely. Jumping knee. Stop! Another ball, eh? Fight. Free caution not to use an elbow. These are not full tie rules. It is often been to the. You see a good exchange against the ropes here from Beta. Told me to the detriment of kickboxing right. over the years and its expansion, the various rule types and rule sets that are in place. So many of them and there's so many various sanctioning bodies, it has become quite confusing which is really where K1 was a godsend for kickboxing when it came to be in 1993, unifying so many various style of martial arts under one set of stand-up rules. Of course, when you have full tie, modified tie, orient rules, international rules, full contact rules, and the little, you know, little variances between them, it does get very confusing for the, for the layman, for the common fan. be one of the reasons certainly in the North American region why kickboxing hasn't reached the heights that many expected it may have even though the action is so great and second round just the confusion surrounding the various rule sets and who indeed is the champion of what two rounds down and one remaining Marat Gregorian seems to be in control it is time for Beta to land some heavy telling blows yeah, Beitar now is in a position where he's got to... He, they're all both inside punchers. He's got to take a half step back and start doing some leg kicks to really offset Gregorian and not realize what's about to happen. Then step in and start banging him out as quickly as possible. Andy Sauer with Andre Menard backstage. You can see the damage there under Sauer's right eye. Not much talking going on back there. As we are ready to roll into the third, U.S. boxing fans may remember Daniela Summer in 1999. She ventured to Las Vegas at the Hilton Come on. for the WBF International Women's Boxing Federation light welterweight title against Christy Martin. Lost by TKO in the fifth round. That was the final loss of her career. Third and final round. High knee from Gregorian. Doubles up and it throws the right hand. Nice aggressive start here from Marat Gregorian. So he's doing exactly what Beethoven needs to be doing to beat him. He took a half step back and started throwing punches from out there to offset him. Front kick from Beta. A purely defensive kick. Good right hand. Hairline from Gregorian. Quarter turn there from Gregorian in the corner. Left hook, need to turn the knuckles in a little more. Instead of catching with the inside of the glove, which is more of a slapping shot. So now Gregorian's getting smart. He's starting to go down low with his legs. He's finally starting to use his kicks. Outside leg kick from Gregorian. And again, that lead thigh. Beta has he nothing to offer here. Fight. Well, he's, he's not, he hasn't fallen apart. Just, just now, Gregorian's trying to pick up the pace, show his, his better technique, his better skill. Beta really is doing the best job that he can do in this situation. He just doesn't have it. Gregorian opens up some room. Will he thread that right hand? Setting for it. Back on the inside. There was an uppercut off the right, and there's a straight right, and he doubles up on it nicely, does Gregorian. This is all one-way traffic here at the Forest National at the moment. 
It is all Gregorian's fight. Oh, another straight right hand between the eyes of Beitar. Jab two. He's digging deep as Beitar. He's trying to get some trying to get some heat going, but every time he does, the great comes back and hits him with two or three solid punches. Look at that. Wow. A one-three from Gregorian. Then a one-two down the pipe. Right hand. Beta. Almost dropped down a level. Lazy front kick. Final seconds of the, op the final round. It will be Gregorian's decision here. Yeah, easily. End of the third round. Beta brave to see out all three rounds. Took a lot of punishment, but Murat Gregorian should take his record to 32, 4 and 1. As we see Chris Nagimbi backstage. His opponent, Robin van der Smalen. Team Golden Glory looks ready to go. The underdog, who was the last minute replacement for Giorgio Petrosian. You're right about van der Smalen. He's, there is nothing flashy about him. That kid steps forward, he comes in, and he just keeps, you know, systematically cutting you down throughout the entire fight. Hey. It's be interesting to see him and, and maybe get after him because I think that uh, a little more action is going to happen. I don't know if, if uh, Van Wismalen can keep up with the pace. It is all part of its showtime, Fast and Furious, from the Forest National in Belgium on HDNet, and this will see a Marat Gregorian decision win. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner of this contest by four against one. The winner from the red corner, Mara Grigoria. No doubt about it. Marat Grigorian, as Simon Rooks told us, keep an eye on this kid. He will be the next big star. And you saw flashes of that talent shine through against Yasin Beta. Folks, when we return here to Belgium, it will be semi-final number one, Arta Kashenko, Andy Sauer, the two tournament favourites. This fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to the Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Ayob Ubeda. And this fight is sponsored by Fight.nl. It is semi-final number one time. The two favorites in the tournament, Andy Sauer and Arta Kishenko, show down. The fight fans have been waiting for in this lineup. Sauer holds a win over Kishenko previously. Kishenko holds a win over Sauer previously. If you take it on face damage at the moment, well, you've got to say that Kishenko is the fresher of the two going into this semi final. Mike Passanier, final instructions Go to yourself, Kishenko for the right to fight in the Go final. On. One step closer to 50,000 euros. Okay. In order to lose. Sauer had hard work okay. in the quarterfinal stage, the going break. an extra round. Kishenko not so hard. <clears throat> Even though Sauer comes in as the overall tournament favourite, BetOnFighting.com at plus 150 to win overall. Round Kishenko one. at plus 250. Round I do one. feel that Sauer is the underdog in this one. Michael Shabalo, Frank Trigg with you. Sauer again in the long shoot boxing trunks. Sauer take time as usual to begin firing on all cylinders. It is maybe a luxury he can't afford against Kishenko. Especially given the ferocity we saw from Kishenko in his quarterfinal bout. Already backing Sauer into a corner here. Can he capitalize with the liver shots? No, High right ground kick. Front kick. And he allows Sauer to drift back to center ring. 
Remember in the last fight, Sauer starts off real slow. First half, the first round, it kind of takes his time. Sauer's amazing career record following that quarterfinal victory now reads 140 wins, 11 losses, one draw, 86 knockouts. This is where Kishenko had his previous opponent in trouble in the corner, barreling away with those right hands. Kishenko's overall record now reads 98 and 12. He's on a four fight win streak now, Kishenko. A beautiful matchup of styles. Kishenko, the big of the two. Sauer has experience, particularly the tournament's experience, Andy Sauer. Former two time K1 Max champion, two spectacular wins. Good leg check there from Kishenko. Sorry for having that long first first fight in the first match. You know, he's really moving quite easily right now. Doesn't seem like he's having any kind of fatigue problem, but what's gonna happen come the third round? Good outside leg kick from Kishenko. Right hand is a lead punch. We saw that in his quarterfinal bout. Hasn't thrown to the liver yet. These two men possess probably the best two liver shots of any fighters at 70 kilos in the whole kickboxing world. Both of them are just outstanding technicians with the left liver rip. Jab two from Kishenko. Nice movement so far from Mike Kishenko. He's staying right in front. He's not doing much. Not, you know, he's not using too much energy, but also staying out of damage. He does need to check that front inside leg kick a lot more from Sauer, otherwise he's gonna have some problems here pretty soon. Last time these two men fought, Sauer lost to Kashenko. Was back in 2008 in the semi finals of the K1 World Max. Come on, Jeez, double rip the liver. Perfect position. Just a little bit too far to the backside and right, right height, but uh, more to the ribs. Good way to finish off you know, that, that first round. And, and honestly, Sauer doesn't look any worse for the word. I thought for sure he'd be a lot slower. I thought he'd have a lot more problems, but he, he doesn't. He seems to be doing okay. A sellout crowd here at the Forest National in Belgium. It's a beautiful venue, holds around 8,000 people in a concert setup. Probably around 10,000 tonight for the fights. The Purple had one of the big concerts here back in 2006 there. Rapture of the Deep World Tour was sold out. You gotta love European ring girls. <laughs> I'm trying not to say anything. Coach, is the ring, please? Uh, Come on! Our seats are the best. <laughs> Kashenko again. Standing between rounds. Yeah. As they remove the One, water two, catchers, three. and we're ready for the second. Shingo's got using his length a lot better than he did even in the first fight. Well, that caught hard with that overhand right, though. Cut. Fight. Kashenko stands at 5'11, 180 centimeters. 5'10 is Andy Sauer. It can't be right though. Because we're looking at him here live on the screen. And Kishenko looks much taller. As we said, he's yeah. undefeated. Kishenko since Hold switching gyms to Mike's gym Fight. last November. I mean, that looks like a big big difference than just an inch. You know, not, not even to mention the reach difference. But Sauer's experience, I think we're starting to see him start to peel up right now because he's really starting to push the pace a little bit. And Kishenko's getting a little more frustrated because. As he's throwing his punches, nothing's really getting through clean like he thought it was going to. There's the liver shot from Kishenko to no avail, then nice and high on the inside part of that femoral artery. Kishenko seems to be pushing the pace here in the second, as he was for most of the first. Good right hand from Sauer, best shot of the fight from him so far. Combination work from Kishenko. Had a right hand lead, a double hook from Ukrainian. 
great combinations from Arta Koshenko. Look how he measures Sauer, particularly with that jab. All tied up, nowhere to go. Referee breaks them. One. Always good sportsmen, both of these men. Well, that one was weird, though. It was a clinch. He said stop. Sauer hit after the break, but then he warned Konchenko for doing it. It's kind of a strange little sequence there. Come on, hey. Groin shot accidental from Koshenko. Sauer needs to go to the legs more here. He's having trouble getting the inside of this long reach of Koshenko. We're not seeing many leg kicks though from Andy. Little side kick, Yoko Getty there from Koshenko to stop Sauer charging in and he drops it. Will it be a count? No. Referee wipes off the gloves. It was a short turning left hand from Koshenko. Not enough to warrant a knockdown. Now we see Sauer going to the legs, to the inside thigh. There's some redding just above that left knee of Koshenko. And a game from Sauer. That may be the game plan now. Now we see Koshenko trying to tie up as much as he can before. In the first fight, he was definitely trying to get as much space as he could. I think Sauer's starting to push him, push him in a little bit and put him into his... His, uh, his cardio reservoir. I really don't think is going to be able to keep that same kind of pace as Sauer is coming in the third round now. It is a very good fight, a tight fight. Wherever you're watching, folks, hope you're enjoying it on HDNet. How are you scoring it? I've got Koshenko slightly ahead after two. Well, he needs to go to the legs here, Frank. He's got to. I don't understand why Sauer didn't go earlier, but when he did, he had so much success at the end of the second round. If he steps in and goes back to it, he'll do be a lot better. And really, I think that that was a knockdown right there at the end. He got caught that overhand with that little turning short left, and he dropped, but he also got kicked at the same time, so the ref could have saw it as a, as a slip with the kick. But really, I think that was a knockdown. Let's we'll see how the judges score it. Come on, Come on! Third and final round. Break. Shinko round for mine two. is ahead. And now you see Sawa turn up the aggressor meter. Good inside leg kick from Sawa. Wow, four punches straight on the same side. That, that's. It's almost like some real serious old-fashioned Mexican boxing. We went three shots to the body, comes up top to the head. None of them didn't all land flush, but definitely all hit. They all got inside. And that really scores a lot of points in the judges when you start doing stuff like that. Nice evasion. Jab, hook from Kishenko. He claims a knockdown. Referee's got to pay it now. The referee initially called Sauer up. Sauer didn't respond, therefore it has to be a knockdown. This will not all go well for Andy Sauer, not at this late stage of the fight. He is now staring down the barrel of an 8-10 round. And Koshenko wants to finish. Here come those barreling right hands again. And Sauer wisely ties him up for preservation. He's going to come hard again. You can see it in his eyes. She goes, definitely must come inside. He's going to look for the body here in a second. Andy Sauer eating the leather here in the third round. Koshenko will not let him off the ropes. Look at this! Koshenko letting fly! Big right hand again, smack bang on the kisser! Sauer in trouble! He gets off the ropes momentarily, but Koshenko puts him straight back on there. Oh, he's looped. This he's is looped. a rabid Koshenko! A brutal Koshenko! Stepping in nice and tight. He let him off. He's backing off. I don't know if Koshenko got tired. But he's giving Sauer time to recover. Koshenko with the jab. What a round so far from the Ukrainian. Well, oh, Sauer on the legs. He goes down for a second time. Is the referee going to count it? Yes, he is. Andy Sauer takes a big breath. Arta Koshenko. Been all over him like corner. Melissa McCarthy on a butterfinger, and he still comes forward. Boom with the right hand, bang with the left hook. 
This is fantastic stuff from Kishenko. He still doesn't have his feet underneath him. He's still walking stiff leg with that right leg of his. His left leg is, mo is barely moving correctly now. I have not seen Sauer take punishment like this repeatedly for a long, long time. Kashenko unstoppable. He continues to bob and weave and move his head and continues to throw, even though the Ukrainian knows he's got this fight in the bag. Look at that double left, make it in triplicate. Short right hand to the jaw. Sauer stumbles again. That's it. Kashenko is going through to the final. Wow, what a great fight. And he didn't, I, I thought that maybe Shaw was going to play past a little bit. And after that first knockdown, let Kishiko punch himself out and come back strong and heavy. Just no space for Shaw to come back into it. A great shot, puts him right down. They want to call it a slip in there, but there's no way. The ref wanted to say he slipped, but he just lost his footing. There's no way. I mean, he got hit, got hit hard, got hit clean, and got put right down to the canvas. And really, so doubling and tripling up and quadrupling up on that, on that left side, going to the body, going to the head, really opened up Shaw to get finished off later. What an onslaught in that round from Kishenko. Two counts put on Andy Sauer. A man who, over the years, has been one of the hardest fighters on the planet to defeat. 153 fights will now incur just Ladies his 12th please loss. Please give a big hand for these two fighters in this wonderful match. And now, the winner of the semi-finals, the Fast and the Furious Tournament 70 kilograms max. The winner by unanimous decision from the blue corner, Artur Kishenko. There it is. He becomes the first man through to the final. He'll take on the winner of either Chris Nagimbi or Robin van Rusmalen. And the way he was fighting there against the favorite Andy Sauer, who he absolutely tore to shreds in that final round. Must surely cement Kishenko as the favorite now. He came in at plus 250 overall to win the tournament. Andy Sauer bows out this time. Andre Menard in his corner. It is not to be though for the former two-time K1 Max World Champion. And folks, when we return, it will be Chris Nagimbi, the current It's Showtime 70 kilo world champion, to take on the complete underdog, Robin van Rusmalen. semi-finals of the Fast and Furious tournament, 70 kilograms max. This fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to the Showtime rules. The referee of this match will be Mr. Mufadel El Ghazahoui, and this fight is sponsored by our It's Showtime app for your smartphone. Semi-final number two, for the right to take on Arta Kashenko in the final. The current at Showtime 70 kilo champion, Chris Nagimbi, against the underdog Robin van Rusman. Remember the rules. No elbow, no spinning back face, no hold forward, and no holding. Okay, second, good luck. Step back. Nagimbi comes Judge. in at minus 215, Judge. van Rusman at Judge. plus 175. Time. Nagimbi Ready? currently riding a six fight winning Wait. streak after wow. his quarterfinal wow. win. And Van Rusmalen pull off an upset here. Nice start from Nigimbi. Checks the low kick. Look out for the flying knees. Opponents the size of Robin Van Rusmalen are tailor made for the jumping and step through knees of Chris Nigimbi. Just look what happened to Willie Burrell in Lyon. Inside leg kick from Van Rusmalen. Nice high knee from Nagimbi. Van Rusmalen tries to counter with the hands. Nagimbi does have a habit of dropping his hands. If he is going to be exposed, that's where Rusmalen does it. Yeah, the biggest thing with Van Rusmalen is that you know, when he gets inside, he, he keeps his hands up high by his temples, but his elbows are flared out. That's dangerous for Robin if he wants to worry about that knee coming up through the center. Honestly, Nagimbi is one of those guys that can throw that knee like he throws a front kick, like he throws an inside leg kick. It just comes from no place. He throws it right at the center. If he taps you a little bit with it, he can get a quick, easy TKO if he's get the full knockout right away. Robin needs to keep his elbows inside. 
Five foot seven of Van der Smalen, five eleven of Nagimbi. Nagimbi with a background in karate, kickboxing, and Muay Thai. Van der Smalen, a Muay Thai stylist. Methodical and clean, athletic. And that's the two styles we're seeing here. Van der Smalen loves to step inside, takes his time. Pushes the pace, chases you down, stalks you down, beats you up. The gimme's gonna be, he's one of those guys, he's gonna, he's gonna stay on the outside as much as he can. And when he goes, he'll explode all over you. Very dangerous. Jab from the gimme, round kick to the midsection. Scoops the round kick of Vandro Smalet. The chance go up for Robin. Gimme smiling behind those punches. Every time he gets hit, he's going to smile a little bit. Makes you wonder if he's actually slipping through. Gimme smiling is so strong that even when you block, he tends to rattle you a little bit. So I wonder if it's starting to take effect. Good inside leg kick from Vandal Smiling. Just moved off an angle. Body shot, leg kick from Nagimbi. Under half a minute remaining here in the first round. Step through knee and a nice right hand from Chris Nagimbi. A very rare shot getting through this watertight defense oh. of Vandros Marlin, who tags him twice. Negimbi momentarily on rubber legs. He smiled at him, but usually with a Muay Thai fighter, that's a sign that you're hurt. Oh, Negimbi got counted again! Vandros Marlin finishes the round well, and I say he takes it, Frank. Yeah, I agree. I think he won it. Not that he stole at the end there, but he definitely did more damage and knocked him out in the last 35, 45 seconds. Because he got inside, he was able to throw an overhand left and caught him twice with that in two different sequences. That's a great job by Robin. Because really, gimby has got such a great head motion, head position, you know, fight game. That's tough to hit him if he has his hands down. He caught him early, caught him flush. Speaking of good motion. Have a look at this round again here, folks. Van Rusmalen going to the body, stepped through knee, then he caught him with a beautiful left-right combination. Over the top, every time with that left hand, if, if there was a right hand over the, you know, over top right hand, what, it'd be crazy how hard he'd be able to hit. He does it with his left side. Just throws a lot of guys off, off center. They're not expecting to come from that way. They're so looking for an overhand right, not looking for an overhand left. Bit of a slap from the corner there of Nagimbi saying, wake up, Fight. time to go to work. Round Second round. Two. We've got 10. 10-9 in the first for Van der Beautiful leg kick. And you see Nagimbi almost gets counted again when he misses with the knee. He's dropping that right glove. Nothing getting through there for the African. Big right hand from Van der Smalen. Nagimbi ties him up. Oh, great position. Robin's getting inside a lot more. He's starting to push the pace. Even as much as he does, he's starting to push it even more. I think he's got more confidence now because he is a lot shorter. So he has to keep his defense tight. He has to be careful getting counterpunched. But now he realizes that Nagimbi's not going to counter as much as he thought he was going. Few people expected this from Robin Van der Smalen. He came in as the fourth favorite or middle field with the bookmakers. Nagimbi was third favorite, but the difference between them in the odds line was just tremendous. Nagimbi at plus 400, Van der Smalen at plus 800 to win the tournament overall. And what will Arta Koshenko be thinking backstage watching this one? Well, you know, for, for Arthur, it's much better for him to fight Van der Smalen because of the height stature and the ability to keep him on the outside. But really, I don't think Nagimbi's got the style defensively to keep up with, with uh, uh, Koshenko either. Jumping knee there from Nagimbi. Van der Smalen pressuring him though. Look how tight the defense is of Van der Smalen. Arms tucked in, elbows against the body, gloves up around the head. He leaves very little target room for Nagimbi to actually strike. And he's always coming forward. He's not backtracking, he's not backing himself against the ropes. Most of this fight has taken place in the center of the ring. Chance for the leg kicks here for Nagimbi. 
He fires a knee, but again, caught on the forearms. There's the leg kick. And another one. Come on. Wow, great position. Getting inside nice and tight. He's got to be careful, though. He's starting to drop his hands a little bit more. He's starting to get hit. Oh, Mervidus Merlin. Big left hand. They give me on legs again. He was almost ready to take that trip down the boulevard of broken dreams. Andrus Marlin, wicked liver shot, inside thigh kick. Here, string it together here, Robin Van Rus Marlin. Again to the liver, then to the jaw. Uppercut, glancing right hand. Van Rus Marlin just in control here. This is not what I expected. McGimby stumbles at the end of the round and lock it away, two zip for Robin Van Rus Marlin. Wow, he's rattled. He has no idea what to answer with. He tried two jumping knees right in a row. Neither of them landed. Then he's coming back inside. He's trying to get some space to get Van Rus Marlin off him, and there's no time to get any space. He stayed right in his face the entire time. There's nowhere to go. Now these punches are starting to land clean. We said earlier that if McGimby doesn't get his hands up, keep tight, tight defense, he's going to get hurt. And Van Rus Marlin is definitely taking advantage of the fact that there are a little bit of holes, and now he's starting up wider and wider as this fight goes along. And Robin Van Roos Marlin pull off an enormous upset. And he, you know, over the next three minutes, eliminates the African, eliminates the world champion in this rank division. Yeah, and I think he will be able to, to be honest with you. I think if he keeps the pace that he's been going, I think we're going to see him in the finals. Third and final round. Two rounds to Robin Van Roos Marlin of the Netherlands. Round three. Come on. Give me with the body shot. Uppercut. Wow. Nice uppercut from Van Roos Marlin. Getting off two of those inside leg kicks just above the left knee of Nagimbi. That will affect Nagimbi's ability to throw the jumping knees. You bang up that lead leg and he can't raise it too high and he wants to propel off it it becomes very hard look at Van Roos Marlin again a little Dutchman with more combinations than a bank safe is staring down the barrel of a berth in the final against Artur Koshenko now he's, he's doing everything completely perfect including his defense where there's no way from him to get inside and hit him at all. This just can't happen. Van Roos Marlin, you know, that's, okay. that really was a shot from the groin to get a break. No. Come on. I gotta be honest with you, he, he put that up in there just to get a, a little stoppage. He needs some time to get his wits back about him. Because really, Van Roos Marlin stepping inside and able to hit him with anything he wants to at this point. Van Roos Marlin, who's been busy in 2011. This is his fifth fight of the year already. Four and one. Seven fights in 2010, going five and two. Nice right hand from Van Roos Marlin, kills it over the top. Jumping knee from Nagimbi, but the precision is not there. Notice the power. That pure explosion on knock him out isn't there either. Right now, even if he does hit him, it's just going to be a glancing blow. Robin Van Roos Marlin, second generation fighter, is going to pull off a massive upset. Unless Chris Nagimbi can turn it around with 50 seconds remaining. I don't see it happening, Frank. I don't see it either. I think he's, I think he's, he's been hit too many times, and now his cardio is gone, his power is left, and his explosive ability is no more. You know, sometimes a fighter comes out of nowhere. Sometimes they are just on. They have a night where they are gliding across a lake towards victory, and that night tonight seems to be for Van Roos Marlin. He has fought two faultless fights so far. As long as he does not make a mistake here in the final 15 seconds, he will meet Kishenko in the finale. McGimby trying, but he's got little to offer in this late stage. 
A final knee from the Gimby, one from Van Rusmalen, and that'll be all. Robin Van Rusmalen will go through to the final. Yeah, I agree. He, he did such a great job. He fought such a flawless fight the first time, even more flawless the second time. It's like they, they really planned out and judged on how the fight was going to be fought in the next round because he changed his style just a little bit to make sure he's going to be able to win. And really, when you're that short, watching out for jumping knee, this is going to come to center, put you right on your chin, you knock out very early. you got to be real careful and real tight with your defense. Van Rusmalen did a great job in here keeping this fight together, keeping it smart, keeping it where he wanted it, all on the inside. And any time that the game was trying to jump and do anything, he got put down on his butt. And that's, that's really shows you how tight Robert made his, made his defense. The Gimby will be out here. We will not get a dream final of Nagimbi versus Kashenko. We will get a very much surprise final of Van Rusmalen. Ladies and, and gentlemen, we have the winner of this contest by four against one from the red corner, Robin. And rightly so. They are bringing the house down for Robin van Rusmalen. The man who came in at plus 800 to win the tournament overall. The man who came in as the replacement for the great Giorgio Petrosian has found himself in the final match. The Robin Pokervase van Rusmalen crew in attendance. Nagimbi is out after beating Derecki in the quarters. A decision lost to Van Rusmalen in the semis. Kashenko versus Van Rusmalen will be the final match. Folks still to come here on HDNet, one of the hottest fighters on the planet, Artim Levin. You are going to love this guy. Take you on Myrtle Grunhardt. still here at the fast and furious 70 kilograms max eight man tournament now the fighters have a little bit rest and then later on we get the finals and right now it is time for the it's showtime world title fight 77 kilograms max and the first fighter making his way to the ring fighting out of the blue corner representing Suriname please welcome the predator Myrtle Grunha Merthel Grunhardt, you've seen him here on HDNet before and it's Showtime events. The Predator has gone 6 and 4 in his last 10 outings. Trained by Mike Passanier at Mike's Gym alongside Badahari, Melvin Manoff, Arta Koshenko. Grunhardt, born in Suriname in South America, a country that gets very little play on the world stage, the world of politics, the world of economics, in the sports world, except, of course, for kickboxing, because the likes of Remy Bonjaski and Tyrone Spong and Ernesto Hoost all hail from Suriname. Grunhardt, the 2010 EMTA K1 Rules European Champion, under 76 kilos, the Octagon Champion in Italy, that is a promotion called Octagon, not actually uh, fighting in an Octagon, in 2008. He's beaten the likes of Amir Ziada, Errol Conning. There will be a gallant opponent here for Artem Levin, as gallant as anyone can be when fighting Artem and Levin. And his opponent in the It's Showtime World title fight, 77 kilograms max, and also the current holder of the world title, representing Russia, fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome Artem Levy! You talk about one of the finest pound-for-pound -pound fighters on the planet in any fight code. You talk about the current 77 kilo world champion, Artem Levin. I mean, this guy is just outstanding and so hard to beat. An incredible record of 62 and three with 28 knockouts. He comes in tonight on a tremendous 20 fight winning streak. That streak, mind you, only extends back to January 2010. Can you believe it? It's not even the end of 2011 yet. And he's already had 20 fights 
in just over 18 months and won them all. And we're not talking about average opponents here either. He beat Cal Cry by decision in Russia. He beat Dimitri Valens by decision in Italy. But most impressively, he beat the contender winner, multiple world champion, Lyotson Clive Fairtex in Beijing. He's beaten so many ties, it's ridiculous. Wins over Matsua, over Nonfanan Pokromak, over Nonsai. The list goes on. Out of Team 11, not unlike Tyrone Spong, he began his career much larger at 67 kilos, one gold there as an amateur. Moved up to 75 kilos, one gold there. Moved up to 77 kilos and won the It's Showtime World title. Then moved up to 79 kilos and won the WBC World Light Heavyweight title. He has done it all. He can still do a lot more out of Team 11. Frank, I'm excited for you to see this guy in action here. We've really been talking about him all week. I can't wait to see him in full live action, see what happens with him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Itch Showtime World Title Fight, 77 kilograms max. And this will be five rounds of three minutes according to the Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Yo Pibida. And this fight is sponsored by Super Pro Subway. Out of 10 11, he comes in the favorite, minus 275. Nurtu Grunhardt at plus 215. Alvin Manoff, Mike Passanier in the corner of Nurtu. Out of 10 11. And that 20 fight win streak I spoke about has finished seven of his opponents. He actually won the qualifying tournament to be a contestant on season two of the Contender Asia, which unfortunately never went ahead. They are currently filming the Challenger series, which is very similar in Malaysia, but not the Mark Burnett Contender series. Mr. Which, of course, was won the first play. season by Yotsen Clive Fairtex when he beat Australia's John Wayne Parr in Singapore. Artem Levin did beat Yotsen Clive, as I said earlier, in Beijing. Michael Frank. Chavello, Frank Trick with you. Ronat will be a very hard man to knock out. Artem Levin will start slowly and pick up as the rounds progress. Gronhardt has such amazing strength as about his neck and shoulders. Even when you do hit him flush, his head barely even moves. We are now at five rounds due to this being a world title defense for Arna Team 11, 77 kilo title. Look at that. Look at the reach on Arna Team 11. The size of his arms. The way he can shoot off his jab and dip his body shot off the lead hand. Superb. Gets out of the way, the inside fire kick from Grunhardt. Nice right hand from Grunhardt to the jaw. Levin evades the second one. That's what Grunhardt will try and do. Get to the inside and brawl with Artem Levin. Levin wants to stay on the outside, use his reach, use his beautiful technique. Yeah, two conflicting styles here, you know, really, with Levin, he's really gonna try to make it a real sweet science kind of kickboxing match where he's gonna stand on the outside and use some great technique. And you gotta be real careful with Gronhardt, he's going to step in and try to beat you up. I mean, and, that, and that's really going to be tough for Levin to deal with in the very beginning. But eventually he'll find his pace and his, his range and be able to keep Gronhardt off him a little bit if Gronhardt stops being as violent as he has been in the last couple of minutes. Levin uh, high left round kick from Gronhardt. Our team putting him in the corner here. Won't let him out at the moment, so Gronhardt ties him up. If you appreciate fine technique, you'll appreciate the fight style of Arna Team Levin. If you like a fighter who just goes for the kill, will appreciate the likes of Mirko Gronhardt. Fight. You see how Levin just measures the shot. Doesn't overcommit, doesn't overextend. Fight. Has very good efficiency of striking. Some fighters will forsake two or three shots to land one, three or four to land two, but not Artem Levin. Good round kick by Grunhardt and the front kick off the lead foot. Overhand right was blocked. 
Hey. Looking for a dump, and he gets it there Stop, out of Tim okay. Levin. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was clearly after, right. after the stop, and that was a good full second. Get more enough time to not try to go for that dump. Inside leg kick. Checks the low kick. Levin says, come on. Strike my thigh. When you hold the left one, actually, no holding, eh? Okay? Fight. There is a major difference between the rules that Levin usually fights under full tie rules and these it's showtime rules. You cannot catch and strike once you've caught the kicking leg. You can't catch it, then strike. You've got to release. Under full tie rules, you can catch the kicking leg, you can hold on to it, strike your opponent with elbows, with, you know, with, uh, with punches, and then sweep them down and drop them and dump them, but not under these rules. One round down, four remaining for the world's title. On a big night, we're still to come. We have a super fight between Moses Borte and Rustemi Kreshnik, and then the final, Robin van Rusmal and Arta Kishenko of the Fast and Furious eight-man tournament. As the night goes on, the clothes on our lovely ladies diminish. Is that a bad thing? Is this how it's supposed to go at night, though? I'm not complaining, brother. Later in the night, the less clothes you're supposed to have on. Yeah, so, Gronhardt has been training with Butter Hurry, who recently announced that he will stop kickboxing in his final fight on January 27th or 28th, if memory serves, against Gokan Saki on an It's Showtime event. It will be Butter's final ever kickboxing fight before he makes a move to professional boxing. Is that a wise choice in your opinion? Right. No. Round two. Right. I think he could light up professional boxing, be very exciting for boxing, where it needs excitement at the moment in the heavyweight ranks, but I don't think Butter's draw augurs well for boxing. And look at Myrtle Grunhardt going for the kill here at the start of the second round. I think he's going for a double-A takedown right there. Artem Levin evaded everything that Murkul threw him on that occasion. After the stop, the stop, okay? It's the game plan constructed by Mike Passanier. So you've got to get in the inside and you've just got to tag him on the jawline. You stay at a distance against Levin, he will pick you off. And Levin's kind of deceiving too, because he doesn't look like he's real strong, he's real tall and lean, kind of lanky. But he's very sinewy. Everything he hits you with kind of hurts. He has no, no tissue over top of his shin, so every time he kicks you, it cuts you wide open. And his hands are amazingly fast, and he's got a lot more power than you think. He uses leverage to his full advantage. Spinning hook kick there from Grunhardt. Held the ropes, though. Nice little knee on the inside for Martin. As I said, just have a look again at the economy of strikes that Artem Levin throws. There's not much that he misses. There's not much that he throws a straight. It's the last one, eh? Yes, the last one. Stop, stop, okay? And the referee, a final caution there for Levin to Come make on. sure he breaks on the break. Nice jab. Stop! Fight. Referee should let them go a little further here in the clinch. Let them get some knees off, give them the benefit of the doubt. Nice body shot. Now, this is still early yet in the fight. These guys aren't looking for rest at this point. You know, let them keep continuing inside this punch here. Especially for, for Glonhardt. That's his best attribute to be able to get inside and try to win this fight. So you got to give him a shot. Stop. Let him battle a little bit on the inside. Fight. Leave him with a front kick. Sits the right hand, perhaps. Nice evasion. Just got out of the way of Goodenheart's right. Front kick to the face. Catches the kicking leg. Counted to the left. Just dropped the kicking leg in time. I can see how, in full tie rules, he's going to give guys problems with that oh, catch of the leg. That kick incredible and reach. Punch. He's at the end of your Fight. kick, and he's still punching you straight in the face. There's nothing you can do about it. It's almost he has so much success over the ties. The likes of Matsua and non tie and. Paul Pramek, Yotz and Clyde, they're all so much shorter than him. The ties don't have reach. They've all got very short arms. Yes. Hey, give me your phone, man. Fight! Step through knee from Levin. Goodhart trying to brawl it out on the inside, but Levin ties him up. Fight! Such an awkward catch.
End of the second End of the round. round. Bryn Hunt smiles. He's finding the get-go very tough. We still have not seen Artem Lemon, however, get out of first gear. Will he pick it up in the third? It is all part of the It's Showtime Fast and Furious tournament from the Forest National in Brussels, Belgium. More when we return here on HDNet. And Artem Levin. Go Zog! Melvin Manuel for the instructions to Myrthal. I'm pretty sure that hey, I know man. what Melvin is saying, even though I don't speak Dutch. It would involve hey, go to his jaw, hit him in the up. head hard. Hell of a nice guy, Melvin Menoff and Mike Passanier. And the protection they afforded me when I was shooting the voice versus Badahari. <laughs> Okay. Will forever be in their debt. Right. <laughs> Round uh, three. That was a great voice versus. I was scared. I was sitting on the TV watching. Third round of five. This is traditionally where Artem Levin picks up the pace, where most Thai fighters do. Oh. Don't forget that Muay Thai fights are conducted over five threes, right. be they title fights or not. Usually due to the betting ringside, they take a slow pace in the first two rounds and then pick up the pace in the third to the fifth hey, the off, yeah, so as to enable all the bets to fully come on. Fight. It has always sort of been a source of wonderment to me why we do that in the Western world. So, in particular, I know it happens a lot down in Australia where Australian fighters do mimic fight. the Thai fighters in starting slow for the first two rounds when we don't bet on the fight's ringside. But that's another conversation for another time. Nice right hand there from Grunhardt. Levin just ties him up in the centre of the ring. He's got to be careful here, Levin. He's been cautioned several times by the referee not to clinch up excessively. Doesn't want to have a point deducted. Not in a championship match. And both guys have been warned to stop at the, at the break. They continue to fight and strike after the break has been called. And the ref is getting ready to stop both guys. Well, the crowd is booing and hissing. Quite rightly so, I believe. It's a very scrappy match with not a lot of flow. I want to see some more clean, fluent technique here. Instead of always moving into a it's clinch. Not... Really, it's not even a good knee clinch, sorry, Frank. It's not a good knee clinch, it's just a, a, a stagnant yeah. stalemate clinch. That's exactly what I was saying. It's not even worth doing anything with it. Jumping in this clinch almost for rest. And that's what I call the resting clinch. I'm just going in, I'm trying to tie up and reset, but you've done it four times in a row in, in a minute and a half. You've got to move on to something else. Knee guard put on there from Myrtle Grunhardt. Lazy jab and Levin a little slow to capitalize with the counter right. right. Now the strange thing is though about Artem Levin that if you're finding this one driving you to a little bit of a boring stupor wherever you're watching it, he does have the ability at any time to pull out a knockout. So too does Myrtle Gronhart. So I would not necessarily advise this is the time to go and make a cup of tea or take that bathroom break. Body shot there from Levin. I feel Grunhardt might be hurt from that earlier strike, Frank. He's backing yeah. himself up against the ropes here. Hey, Backing up and, and guarding up. He's, just, he's putting up the knee guard, putting his hands in, trying not to get hurt. Left hand from Levin. Stop. Final seconds of the third okay. round. Fight. Well, if you forgot to buy your Tylenol PM this week, Here's your cure for insomnia. I don't know why Artem Levin is dancing. Two rounds to go in this championship fight. I mean, Artem's winning, which is why he's dancing. But he's not doing anything impressive to make a stand up. He doesn't wow. deserve to dance, Frank. No, he really doesn't. It's a non-dancing performance at the moment. Then he's a big, tall white guy that really can't dance, so... Narrow it down. Now that's a cause for dancing right there. <laughs> Penultimate round of action coming up. 
Artem Levin looking to retain his world title at 77 kilos. Move ahead to 41 wins on his record. Berthel Gronhardt looking for his 47th career victory. Come on. Nothing. Hey. Round four. Okay, fight. Round four. Gronhardt immediately backing up against the ropes. It's so tough to get outside of Levin's reach. He throws a, a looping hook, and it's still 14 feet away from him. <laughs> you know, it, you have so much problems getting underneath him. So even Bob and Wheaton doesn't really work. You have to beat him to the inside, and that's tough to do. Fight! No doubt Murtha would have been sparring Bada Hari in preparation for this one, given that bada has got similarly long reach. Beautifully done. That is textbook Muay Thai 101. That was great. I love when you see a guy standing and goes to guard up and gets kicked out from underneath. And that takes so much technique and almost zero strength, but a lot of Stop. technique and time to make that thing work correctly. Stop. Hey, nimm mich auf, Rainer. Fight. <laughs> the ref just told him don't use his shoulder, <laughs> and he hit him with his own shoulder back him up. <laughs> This referee's been around since the Stone Age, refereeing in Holland. Across all of Europe, actually. Levin, turning right, left round kick, nothing behind it, though. Fakes with the left hand. He switched momentarily there between Orthodox and Southport did Levin. He's in Southport at the moment, you see. Oh, Grohart's got to get out of the corner here. Levin put him with a little knee on the inside. That, it looked like he fell down a little bit, but I think he was actually Oof. reaching for the corner post and this time where it was, which is weird to me because Gronhardt looks like that, now he's trying to rest again. I, I didn't see him get hit by anything other than being tired. I, I mean, I don't know why he would be trying to bury up because I think he's doing pretty well right now against Levin. Gronhardt covers up. He is allowing Levin to beat him to the punch in this round. Whereas he was the one that was striking first in the earlier Top. rounds, Myrtle Gronhardt. Could be a sign of fatigue here. It's not often that Myrtle has to go five rounds. Usually he's fighting in three rounders. But he gets his tilt at the championship here tonight. It's time to step up to the plate. Fight. I know, and you guys at home, you know, it sounds like, well, six minutes really isn't that much more time, you know, really for a fight. But that's a big, that's a long difference when you're fighting for a title fight. Six minutes is a real long time when you're at a high rate. Try not to get hit while hitting. It's a big, it's a big so, difference. Los. Five. Eleven. Front kick to the midsection. Final 20 seconds of the fourth round. It's going to be out of 10 Levin's round just because Murderful hasn't really done anything. Can he try and steal it now, perhaps? Hard to steal rounds against Artem Levin. Look at that, how he throws the right hand from the hips. These awkward angles he uses and full extension of his reach. End of the fourth round. I've got him ahead in this fight, Artem Levin. Yeah, absolutely. And look at the way he was fighting at the end of the round. His hands were dropped down around his hip and he's just jumping in with punching because Gronhardt really isn't doing anything back to him. He's not punching back, so he doesn't even care about defense anymore. And Frank, I dare say, having seen and commentated Artem in the past, I, I, he's not out of first here at all no he's, he's this, this is a glorified strong. sparring session for him he's probably fighting at about 35 percent i would say if that you know it, he's also one of those guys that games up the harder you go at him the harder he's going to go which causes him to get a lot of knockouts because guys always want to step up their game and i don't think that gornhardt's going to do that he's just going to fifth round he's going to kind of hold on and hang out and i don't know if he's tired if he got a small injury or, or what's going on but he just isn't coming forward as much as he should be and as a result Artem Levin doesn't really have to do anything. Levin just kind of stand there and, and hang out and, and you know, get the victory relatively easily. Coaches have the Fifth and final round of the championship match. The 77 kilo title of Artem Levin on Rigolo. the line and looking safe at the moment. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Hug, kiss. Get ready to go. <laughs> Round five. <laughs> Levin. They tie up early. Yes. Short knee for Martin hey. Levin. Will he finally step it up a notch here in the final round? The champ. 
As Frank said, he's done enough and he can do enough just to win and retain the title, but he won't win any fans here in Belgium. Body shot, nicely timed. Grunhardt tries to loop over the top. Step through knee from Levin. And you see how he snakes the hand, taps his thigh, he invites Grunhardt to throw to the thigh. Just some mind games there from Levin. No doubt he's inherited that from the ties. Ties are full of mind games in their fights. Nice knee, caught Grunhardt then. In the corner. Five. I think Levin has stepped it up a notch here in the final round, Frank. But to me, he's still only in second gear now. He is picking it up. I think he is looking for a finish, but he really hasn't gone to that full fledged we like to see him fight at no. in the past. He's gone maybe from 35% to about 42%. And look at Grunhardt. He is tired now. Levin with the body shots. Knee to the midsection. Five. Doubles up on it. Almost bolts him in half like origami. Five. One minute 30 remaining, uppercut from Levin. Stop. Yes. Fight. Oh, beautiful oh. knee! Hey. Grunhardt oh. goes down, that was a Five. solid knee, the mouth guard's Four. out, this one's over. Five. The mouth guard Six. spat out, Grunhardt writhing in pain, hey. he's not going to get Done. up. Done. Our team Levin defends the and world title, match. yes, now you can dance. Wow, Fuck, he stepped up the way we thought he would. He finally accelerated about 50% and got that knee inside. That's a hard knee, Frank. Grunhardt is still down. One beautiful knee strike to the midsection. Jeez. Great positioning, great timing. Finally slid it inside and got him down. And he did it so quick, I almost didn't even see him lifting his leg up to get after it. Grunhardt still down, the doctor there standing over him. You know, traditionally when you see a knee knockout, usually comes from a knee to the jaw, a knee to the forehead, knee to the temple. Rarely do you see a single knee strike cause a knockout or the knee to the body. Caught him in the liver, I think, is what he was saying. He was tapping his stomach, trying to tell the, the, uh, the doctor, the ringside doctor, that he got hit right in the liver. So that, uh, you know, good body blow. And that's what we've been seeing all night so far is that everyone's going to the body, hitting that, going to the right side of the body, getting to the liver. And, you know, tonight, R. Tim Levin did it with his knee, which is amazing. It is a thing I love about European kickboxing in particular, the use of the body shots, particularly the dipping liver shots. There's Simon Rooks with the World Championship. R. Tim Levin may have bought his fifth for four rounds, but he turned it on in the fifth to score a very good knockout. I would be intrigued to see how Levin goes in a eight-man tournament situation, three fights over one night, Frank, if he could step up his pace to be able to do that at a you know, high level. You know, part of the problem is, too, is that when you get wins like Ladies this, where you're kind of bored one to death and you get a knockout, you're not going to step your pace up. We have a winner in the It's Showtime world title fight, 77 kilograms max, and still the holder of the title from the red corner, Artem Levy! Artem Levin now takes his win streak to 21 fights in a row. He is still the It Showtime 77 kilo, 175 pound champion. Also the WBC Muay Thai light heavyweight champion. Who can possibly stop the lion, Artem Levin? There's folks still to come here on HD and Edit Showtime from Brussels, Belgium. A super fight in the heavyweights. Moses Bote takes on Rustemi Kreshnik. And the final between Robin van Rusmalen and Arta Kishenko. It has been a stunning night so far with great knockouts, high precision fighting and a lot of pace. And with two fights left, you do not want to go anywhere. Good to see Grunhardt back to his feet. And our team Levin, that strap affixed firmly around his waist. As we see the knee that did the damage, one single strike to the midsection. Have a look here. Oh, beautifully timed. It was indeed to the liver. Wow, great space. Got right underneath the elbow, right in that area. There was no place to go. Out of Team Levin showing how it's done. A world-class knee to the midsection. And folks, when we return, more action coming your way. Moises Bote takes on Rustemi Kreshnik as the big boys throw down.
and gentlemen, this heavyweight fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Muvadel El Ghazahoui. And this fight is sponsored by Top King. Frank, I'll give you $100 if you can say that referee's name correctly. Three times really fast. Even once. No. <laughs> give it to me once, give it to me. <laughs> I can't even say it, so I'm not even going okay. to attempt it. Because right. usually I'm the one having to ask you for help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is a heavyweight contest between Moises Borte out of the blue corner and Rushtimi Kreshnik out of the red corner. Three rounds of action here. Okay, good luck. Come on. Moises Borte undefeated 5 and 0. Oh. All of That's his wins nice. by knockout for the behemoth. No elbow, no spinning back fist, no holding, no head. Poor okay. little referee, the Sick meat out. between good this luck. big sandwich. So Kreshnik, 24, 6 and 1, 7 knockouts. He's beaten the likes of Thomas Ron, Dutch, Rico Verhoeven. The Albanian Kreshnik, Dan. born in Kosovo, trains at the real really? team under Omar Belhadi. Right. Formerly wow. worked as an auto mechanic wow. and a nightclub bouncer. First round of action Michael Chevello, Frank Trigg in the gold and black trunks is Kreshnik. Oh, I can see how Bote right. gets a lot of knockouts. He takes the leg kick and immediately returns to the right hand and he's. So quick with the right hand, he doesn't mind getting kicked in the legs. Bote is a big unit. Checks the low kick. Just look at the way he's slowly walking down Krishnik here. Krishnik already forced to the outside, and Bote swinging with that left hand. Good double forearms defense from Moses Bote. Nice high knee. Scary figure. Krishnik trying to thread the. Left hand through, fighting out of a southpaw stance. Now switches to Orthodox. Body shot from Kreshnik. Kreshnik's got to keep moving. Oh, yeah. Bate's got that simple, you know, straight style, power sledgehammer kind of punches. If Kreshnik stands in front of him, he's gonna get, and even if he guards him, he's still going to get hit. We've seen him double, double forearm guard a couple punches right now, and he's still getting rattled a little bit. Jab right hand from Bate. For a man of his size and relative inexperience, he is 5-0. He does throw very clean technique, Frank. Look at that jump walk right hand, step through knee, nice and clean from Borte. I like it. Great instruction. Must have spent a lot of years training before he decided to go ahead and start fighting professionally because he's got a lot of years of experience right there. We'll see how his cardio lasts. If this one does go into the deeper rounds, though, I don't know if Krishna can really push him. At the moment, it's Borte that's controlling the pace, dictating the ring, forcing Kreshnik to the outside. Look at the jab. Kreshnik's got to do more overhand rights. He's got to try to time it a little bit better. He sees Borte drop his hands. He's got to go ahead and put that overhand right in as quickly as he can. Going struck there. Borte's guard up nice and high. He has to be careful when he throws that jab, not to lean the head back, though. Keep the chin tucked, Moses Borte. Checks the low kick. Nicely done. Good anticipation for a big man. Usually, the big fellows, the inexperienced ones, can be too slow to pick up on the check. Well, also, too, look at Bolte. His front foot is very flat. He has an, almost no expansion at all, and he's still got his foot up. So he's got a lot of up, um, abs strength, a lot of hip flexor strength, which is going to go a lot for these big, heavy punches and start throwing here a little bit. Krestic has got to move out of the way. He can't let him stop him down. The Albanian Krestic with a head kick, counter right hand, double left from Bolte. Nice stinging left hand again from Moses Bolte. He wobbled him a little bit. Kreshnik's on his bicycle. He's trying to run away right now. He got hit a little bit with that straight right, or excuse me, straight left hand on the center. Stiff jab from Kreshnik. Bolte outside pike. He got Kreshnik counters him. That was beautiful work from Rustemi Kreshnik. Best shot of the fight for him, but it will be Moses Bolte's round. Wow, for, for his record, it only shows. 5-0 oh, makes you wonder one of two things. He's got an amazing coach who really got inside of his head and knows how to keep him very stabilized and, and make him understand how to be able to compete at such a high level. Or he's been fighting in those fights where he's yeah. got like 10 or 15 more fights that we don't know anything about. Unless I'm thinking those 5-0 and oh could be A-class fights. They do do class divisions in fighting in Holland particularly. C class, B class, A class. They could do just his A class record, Moses Borte. Either way, a solid start for the big man as we see Artek Kashenko backstage.
preparing for the final fight in the Fast and Furious eight-man tournament. Coach is out the ring, Against please. Robin van der Smalen. Look on her. Rustemi Krishnik showing he's not as intimidated as we may have thought. Getting a good shot off of the final seconds of that opening round. Fight. Round two. Jab two from Preshnik, then through to the body. You see again how Borte is leaning his head back when he jabs. If Preshnik can time it to come over the top with his right hand, he'll catch it. Confident now, Moses Borte. Oh, something happened. It looked like he got hit, hit pretty hard by Krishnik, or something happened. Ooh, Krishnik going for a Borte, throws a kick to the face, lunges with the right hand, stiff jab from Krishnik. Wicked high left round kick, didn't find the target. Looks like Borte obviously got tagged up a little bit. He's trying to back himself off. It happened again. You see Borte lift his chin up in the air. Krishnik comes to him at a cage with a left and once more. Kreshnik is finding his rhythm now, realizing that Borte's chin is in the air. That's the experience of a guy that's been in a lot of high-level, in past level fights. His 30-second career fight here for Kreshnik. He is bleeding now from the nose. Jab from Borte. And he's not flown with the confidence that he had in the first round in Moses Borte. Round kick for the liver. And oh. Krishnik counted him! Oh. It is over! Borte laid out! Krishnik knocks him out with a beautiful counter! That was awesome! Wow! I told you the like chin that. up was too high, and Frank. Yep, yeah. and that's experience. That's where the high level experience comes from. You realizing, hey, I'm, I'm getting beat up. This guy's way stronger than I am. He's stalking me down. I'm in a lot of trouble. All of a sudden, you hit him one time and go, hey, that chin's up. And now I have my angle. There's my opening. How am I going to get back to that chin? Bring his hands down, go to the body, come back up top of the head. He eventually got the knockout. That was great. That was great. Tremendous finish there from Rustemi Krishnik. Career victory number 25. <laughs> his daughter's very nervous. Yes. Daddy, put me down. <laughs> Stop it. Put me down. Those people are staring. <laughs> what a night here for Rustemi Krishnik. Beautiful knockout. Let's have a look again here. Steps in and right when he comes down with those hands dropped, he hits him right behind the ear. Oh, behind right the ear, side, that's yeah. spot, that's Because he dropped, because what happens, Bote jumps in and drops that hand and a big punch. And as a result, he just leaves, oh, excuse me, a big kick, left it open yeah. and just came over the top and threaded it. Wow, great position. That's exactly what I said before. He was leaning, putting the head up with his left hand down and he got caught. Look at this. Left hand down, nowhere. Reaching up in the air. Worse than being down, he's reaching. So you know exactly where it is and how easy it is to get over Ladies the top of it. Uh, the winner of this heavyweight super fight by a beautiful knockout from the red corner, Rishtemi Krishni. Rishtemi Krishni takes it by a knockout over Moses Boite to win this heavyweight stoush. And folks, that means we have one more fight left on tonight's card. The closing betting line is in. Arthur Koshenko at minus 225. Robin Van Rusmalen at plus 185. Who will win the Fast and Furious eight-man tournament? Who will win 50,000 euros? Will it be Koshenko as we see him backstage? Can he finally win an eight-man tournament? Or will it be the underdog, Robin Van Rusmalen? We'll find out when we return. National Brussels, Belgium. This is the It's Showtime edition number 52. And now it is time for the final of the Fast and Furious eight man tournament 70 kilograms max. One of these two fighters will be the winner of the grand prize of 50,000 euros. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get the finalists here in the ring. And the first one making his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, representing. Ukraine. Please welcome Artur 
Kirkyshenko. What a moment here for Arta Kishenko. If there is one man over yeah. the years in the 70 kilo division that deserves a tournament win, surely yeah. it has to be no, Kishenko. In 2008, he came close, controversially so, when he fought Masato in the final of the K1 World Max. He lost by an extra round decision after knocking down Masato in the early going. Many people think Kishenko should have won on that night. He also lost to Masato the year before in the semi-finals of the K1 World Max. Has his time come tonight under a new coach, still undefeated since joining Mike Passanier last November? Is this now the moment for Kishenko to finally win a 70 kilo tournament? And his opponent in this final of the Fast and Furious 8-man tournament, 70 kilograms max, fighting out of the red corner, representing the Netherlands. Please welcome our second finalist, Robin! The crowd is behind Robin van Roosmalen. And you have to understand just what an occasion this is for Robin. He came in here tonight following a loss to Mohamed Kamal last time out in May. He also comes in as the replacement fighter for Giorgio Petrosian, who was the raging favourite to win this tournament, the two-time and current K1 Max World Champion, Giorgio Petrosian. So out of nowhere, Bruce Marlin comes in. First of all, he beats Shahid Ulad al Hajj by TKO. Then he beats Chris Nagimbi, the current world champion, at this weight under the Showtime banner by majority decision. Now he has the chance to upset Arta Kishenko, who came in the number two favourite overall. Kishenko, who beat the number one favourite, Andy Sauer. Kishenko, who hasn't taken that much damage yet. What a moment here for Vandros Marlin to become a true Cinderella story. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final. One of these two athletes will win the great prize of 50,000 euros. This fight will be three rounds of three minutes according to Showtime rules. And the referee of this match will be Mr. Mubadel El Hazahoui. And this fight is sponsored by Facebook.com slash It's Showtime and L. All is in readiness for the final. 50,000 euro. My calculations equals around 68,000 US dollars. Oh. Not a bad night. Three fights okay. in one night. On. 68 grand. Not too bad. Arta Kishenko first to the center of the ring. Remember the rules. No oil ball. Let's man up like this. So we're going to no guess here. Okay. Second. Mr. has to fight on the inside. Okay. Indeed, he cannot stay at range against Kishenko. That would be Judge. a death sentence. Judge. Judge. Kishenko is going to go hard, Time. going to go strong, and so too will Van Rusmalen. Really? You are going to see a lot of action from the opening Wait. bowel. There well, shouldn't be a filling well. up process in this one. The final! Michael Chavello, Frank Trick with you. And already those beautiful left round kicks of Kishenko. Double jab, right hand from Van Rusmalen. High knee! And a high left round from Kishenko. He's opened up like a house of fire. Inside leg kick from Van Rusmalen. Kishenko, as I said, the favourite, minus 225. Andrus Marlin, plus 105. Nice jab off Southpaw stance from Kishenko. All tied up, nowhere to go. Referee separates. Kishenko probing. He was fighting Orthodox earlier in the night. He's Southpaw here in the final. Is he hiding something? Is he protecting something? Or is he just trying to confound Andrus Marlin? Side, catches him on the schnoggin. He'll be breathing out of the back of his head after that one, Kishenko. Outside leg kick from Van Rusmalen. Kishenko dips the liver. And again, attacking the organ. Well, Kishenko's guard has opened up quite a bit from the last fight. And Van Rusmalen's has found a way to get inside. Every single time he wants to throw that straight right hand down the center, he's getting his way in there. Kishenko the beat through with the two so far. Sitting behind the jab. Throws the left down the corridor. It's an aggressive start for Kishenko. 
Come to a smile and force the cover up at the moment. He's got to choose his time to go on the inside. Now he gets there. And Kishenko puts him at range with the jab. Body shot. High knee! Ty clinch and knee. Nicely done from Kishenko. Threads the jab again. The Ukrainian working his hands well. Vamrus Marlin covers up. Not letting anything get through the forearm. Backs Kishenko against the rope. But the Ukrainian springs off back to center in. Body shot, uppercut, right hook, outside flying kick. Kishenko putting down the points. Vamrus Marlin goes to the body. The double forearms guard of Vamrus Marlin is exquisite. The left hook. No! Undersized, completely supposed to be overmatched in this fight. Was not supposed to have the height, the reach. All he had was the power to get in there, and he completely sneaks all the way inside and gets in and knocks out Kinshaka. That was a huge victory. What a great shot. He's only ever been knocked out twice before in his career, Kishenko. Last time was back in 2010 in the third round. Before that, in 2007, in the second round, he has never been knocked out in the first round. What was that, 47 seconds? Incredible. Van Rosmarlen, the underdog of the tournament, out of nowhere. The replacement for Giorgio Petrosian. He's gone through to win. What a great job. That's amazing. Amazing to be able to pull us off. He picked at the right time. He obviously had his technique down, stayed with the game plan. His coaches put them together perfectly. Look what at that left job. hand again behind the ear. Perfectly timed. One strike. And the thing about it is that it wasn't the only strike he was trying to throw. He threw a three-punch combination, but only one punch landed before he fell down. That was the beginning of the three-punch combination. That's why you got to throw in combos. That's why you have to punch in bunches. Because you never know which one's going to be the one that's going to land and knock the guy down. It was like when uh, Ali knocked out Foreman in Zaire. Punch got him, then he threw a couple after that and just let him fall to the ground. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. What a great shot. Right at the temple, this. left hand right over the top. Wow. I can't believe it, Frank. I, I mean, if you ask me who was going to win this tournament at the start of the night, I mean, Sauer, Kashenko, the favorites, and can be on the other we side of the draw. Van yeah. Rosmaler would not even have figured yeah. at all. 50 kilograms max. The winner by a knockout in the first round. In the quarterfinal, he broke the tooth of Chahid Ulad Al Haj in the second round. In the semi finals, he took out the world's champion at this weight, Chris Nagimbi, by decision. And here in the final, in the first round, in under a minute, he's knocked out Arta Kishenko with a left hook of the highest order. Robin Van Rusmalen, your champion, and Tyron Spotten there congratulating him. What a moment for Van Rusmalen. What a moment for his camp. What a moment for his father, William Van Rusmalen, who we said earlier had knocked out Vitaly Klitschko back in the day when Klitschko was kickboxing. And now his son has just knocked out Art Kishenko. Okay. $68,000. For Mr. Kushenko. And he's not Please, a big middleweight either. 5.7. 150 two pounds. Of this tournament. And winner of the check of 20,000 euros. The number two of the Fast and Furious eight man tournament, 70 kilograms max, Arthur Kushenko. Kushenko just seems to have bad luck when it comes to eight man tournaments, Frank. He yeah. just can't seem to go that little extra and, and, and clinch one of them. It's such a tough t format to be in, really, to get through and be able to have have the, the game, you know, have the fortitude to last through three fights that night. It's so difficult. And then, really, a lot of it, too, is a little bit of luck of the draw. You know, a little bit has, you know, who do you draw in the first and second rounds? 
how do the, how do the fights go, and then what's going to happen with the opponent across the and other now, way? I mean, you cannot deny the fact that Kishinko, probably out of everyone tonight, did look the best. He was incredible to watch all night. He brought the aggression, he brought the power, he brought the technique, he kept coming forward, but he made just one cardinal mistake of dropping his hand, and it took just a split second for Robin Van Rusmalen to capitalize. That's the game of kickboxing. Yeah, I mean, that's the way it goes in all, in all athletic competition. Really, in team sports, you've got a shot to cover up a hole. Every now and again, you know, a guy may break away, but you can cover up the other guys on the field. In, in, in contact sports like this, whether it's kickboxing or mixed martial arts, one small mistake ends the whole night. Look at this guy, Robin Bass, Van Russ Mullen is it definitely stepped up, and I'm so surprised, because I agree with you, like, he was not on the radar at all. Just as a replacement came in and just kind of, kind of, the guy's going to be there, and he shows up and wins the whole thing. Robin van Rusmal, and if you didn't know his name Inspired before tonight, he's just become Rott, a household a name in kickboxing overnight. Simon Roots presenting a it's final present. It's worth it's as much. Euros. It's a twelve thousand dollar watch right there. Add that to the sixty-eight grand the US just one. He's having a very good night at the office, van the van van once again, folks, just to illustrate, Van Rusmalen came in overall to win the tournament at odds of plus 800. In the final, he was plus 185. Kashenko was minus 225. Out of nowhere, a real Cinderella story. You could say almost the equivalent to Mark Hunt winning the K1 World Grand Prix in 2001, when he was just there to make up the numbers and he rampaged through the tournament, beating Jerome Labana and then beating Stefan Leko, and then defeating Francisco Filio in the Robert final. Like well, something. this is very similar. Van Rus Marlin was here I to make up I the numbers. I want to thank all the guys, uh, people who are with me today. I want to thank my dad, my uncles, everybody who is there for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Robin van Rus winner of the tournament. Robin also I want van to thank you too, for this uh, opportunity. Winner of the tournament here tonight. And Thank you've you got to wonder, much. will he get a crack at Chris Nagimbi's world title? Having defeated Nagimbi earlier on here tonight, will he want a shot at the strap Nagimbi holds around his waist? The official 70 kilo world title. Folks, we hope you've enjoyed all the action here from the Forest National in Brussels, Belgium. It was an historic night where eight of the finest middleweight kickboxers on the planet got into the ring with only one man surviving. We saw Gago Drago. We saw Arta Kashenko in quarterfinal number one with Kashenko coming up trumps. Andy Sauer had a tough go against Gregorian in quarterfinal number two, but Sauer came through, but it was a damaged Andy Sauer, wasn't it, Frank? We saw yeah. against Kashenko in the semis. A lot slower coming through in the semifinals. Didn't have as much, much power behind himself. Really couldn't step himself in and finally got knocked down and knocked out. It's just, that's how this, the kickboxing game goes. It's really difficult to try to battle against the guy, especially like Kashenko with his length and his strength. Inside B of the draw, it was Nagimbi and Van Rusmalen in the semi-final. Nagimbi was touted again as a favorite, but Van Rusmalen overcame the odds to advance. Merthel Gronart had a tough fight against Artem Levin, who was riding a 20-fight win streak in this 77-kilo world title defense. A snooze fest, a cure for insomnia for the first four rounds before Artem Levin delivered one solitary knee to the liver that knocked out Merthel. And how about this KO? Kreshnik over Borte in a heavyweight slugfest. And that took us, of course, to the final match where Robin van Rusmalen defeated Arta Kashenko and claimed 50,000 euro. Folks, wherever you watched on here on HDNet, we hope you've enjoyed all the action. As once again, HDNet continues to be your home for mixed martial arts, kickboxing, and a whole lot more. We are bringing you the biggest events from around the world, and it's going to continue. So make sure you stay tuned, and we'll keep bringing you the biggest and best action from myself, Michael Chevello, my verbal sparring partner, Frank Trigg, and all the crew at HDNet. We say thank you at showtime. Congratulations, Robin van der Smalen.